On October 9th, 2020, three hot dog loving Chicago boys set out to record an episode of the Nerditude Movie Podcast. A podcast, I'm told, is actually quite good. Luis Rodriguez, age 10. <coughs> Matthew Gendry, age 31. <coughs> Alex Linton, age 67. <coughs> this recording documents the last known whereabouts. Their bodies have not been found. Robocop 3 is a great movie. And welcome back to the Nerditude Movie Podcast. Uh, I'm one of your hosts, Lewis, and I'm here with Matt and Alex. Hello. Um, and we are on to week two of uh, our Halloween movie marathon. Um, so we're doing a triple feature, oh. just like last week. I, I did label this uh, in the YouTube video. This is the H Mom Halloween Movie Only Month. H Mom. H Mom. Yep. Okay. Makes no sense. Sorry, go on. Welcome back to H Mom. Uh, <laughs> um, all right, so so sticking with the the themes for this month, we're doing a triple feature today. This week's theme is remakes. Um, just kind of felt right to go follow that up uh, after classics. So the three movies we're going to be reviewing today, we have uh, Pet Cemetery, uh, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Um and Hollow Man. Um, so we're gonna start with uh, Pet Cemetery. Um, so this movie uh, came out in 2019, and this is a remake of the 1989 adaptation, which is a adaptation of the Stephen King book. Um, this movie has a runtime of 101 minutes. Um budget was 21 million uh so i mean for nowadays that's kind of a, a lower budget horror flick uh box office 113 million dollars um so this would definitely be considered a success yeah, five times it's uh it's cost yeah um so this movie was directed by two directors i am not familiar with uh kevin kolsik and dennis widmeyer um, no idea. there were, there were, this movie was kind of in development since 2010, so it kind of changed hands with directors and the lead as well. Um, but for a cast, uh, we have Jason Clark as, uh, Dr. Lewis Creed. Weird face. That's the guy, yeah, that's the guy's name. You see him in so many movies, but you can't remember his name. Weird face. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you have, uh, Amy Smets as Rachel, Rachel Creed, uh, Lewis's wife. Uh, John Lithgow as Judd Crandall, who couldn't be bothered to do a fucking main accent in this movie. Um, he just showed up and was like, I'm just going to be I'm John, John Lithgow. Lithgow. Why doesn't he play Santa Claus more? Like, he would be like a perfect for like a cheesy Netflix Santa Claus heartwarming movie. He looks just like the fucking guy. Is he going to keep the yellow? Uh, yeah, I didn't understand that. Here, I didn't know if that was like because he just drinks too much lemonade. It's the tobacco it's, from his roll oh, cigarettes. Oh, is that? Oh, that's disgusting. Yeah, when you roll your own cigarettes, you pull more tobacco on any facial hair that you may have. Now that I know what that is, I'm more disappointed. That's gross. Anyway, <laughs> so um, 
that's that's really top billing for this movie is the three uh <laughs> weird three face john lithgow and wife character yeah um so with that we can jump into uh first impressions um I- i'll go first uh this movie's all right <laughs> you know it's it's hard to follow right. up the, the 1989 uh adaptation which i even like uh the herman monster bro adaptation even um, like the what what was that the sequel i, I like uh, pet cemetery 2 as well okay didn't that have I, edward furlong in it yes yes yeah ah, yeah okay yeah um but i i, I don't know I'll, I'll my first impression will be this movie was all right but uh what did you guys think matt what did you think about it um first impression it, it you know it's got the look of a modern horror movie like they kept you know nowadays there's kind of a template of angles and filters that are used and it's obviously got that uh small budget's not bad i like john lithgow i understand that nobody like they can explain why the family doesn't have any sort of main accent but for him to be like living there his whole life and be like talking just like third rock from the sun is a little interesting yeah (laughs) um but no it, it was okay they do change a lot which threw me off between not only between the the original movie but also the book quite a bit, um, and by the end I, I can't say I was a hundred percent satisfied. But that's my first impression. How about you, uh, Alex? Uh, it, it was all right too. Um, I, I agree with Lewis on that. Uh, compared to the what I remember from the Pet Cemetery original, there there were similarities, and then there was like you said things that completely changed. Yeah. Um, I did not read the book, so I can't compare anything to the book yeah. uh, <laughs> but uh something that that as far as first impressions I, I, it's that, that really bothered me was kind of how they changed the two characters of gage and ellie and we'll get into that in a little bit yeah i, I will say mm-hmm. when it does come to that scene where it completely differentiates from the original it mm-hmm. is a little bit of like you see it coming but it's still kind of like oh damn they did that yeah they did that yeah. i see okay but they didn't do okay. it, and I'll go into why I, I say this, but they didn't do it well enough, I'm just saying. But yeah, so, let's, yeah. so let's just jump into it then. Like, obviously, you guys seen the first, you, like, you guys have seen the first film in that scene where uh, Gage gets fucking just yeah. annihilated. 18-wheeler, um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I agree, like, this this movie, well, if you, uh, when this movie came out, the trailers kind of just away that fucking twist of course uh, yeah which um, all trailers do lately they just they're just like hey guess what you want to see the best parts of it that is why i don't watch trailers unless it's like a marvel movie or something because i because none of it's good right so it's just like whatever you know, the the shitty thing is that's usually like the distributor the production company like a director can work his ass off on a film and just he'll see a trailer and be like ah oh, well they just fucked it all up like, well the, certain movies have done trailers have like it depends because trailers can even like do a huge disservice just because of how different they are like there was that movie um i think it's like who's calling or something i don't remember but it was all about the guy who was a a black telemarketer who used who used a white guy's voice and the whole oh um yeah the whole trailer though that's the trailer and then you watch the movie and it's completely not about that at all like that's just a segment of the movie so there's certain trailers out there that still give a good, um, a, a good kind of uh, hiding it. But Marvel movies are basically like you can look at it and be like, "That's a spoiler. That's when this character dies," you know. Um, but I'm sorry, go on uh, with some of your spoilers. Oh no, I was gonna say so that that scene, that that twist in this movie. Um, I don't know. I I feel like that was their their kind of hook for this movie because I don't. No one no one really cared for a Pet Cemetery remake, um, and it's I mean, not it's not one of King's like biggest books. Like as an adult, as a parent, it, to me, it's his most fucking terrifying book. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I I don't know that that was kind of this movie's main hook for me. Like everything else was just kind of like it, the whole movie was just like okay. It was very um, rudimentary, just kind of like by the numbers almost. Like w- act one goes into act two, act two is this, act three, you know what I mean? Like you could have, re- like you, if just by watching the first 10 minutes, you could pretty much write out what's going to happen. 
Although the the scenes, I can't remember if in the first Pet Cemetery they really did anything big with Zelda's character, the sister. Um, okay, so yeah, so one of the creepiest scenes in the in the original Pet Cemetery involves her because the the wife has the flashes in the original. She's got the flashback, okay. and but the the in the in the remake, the, and this is going into spoilers, obviously. They do the stupid. She fell down a dumb waiter. Like that's the horrific yeah. how the sister died. But in the original one, her disease is what kills her, and what the what the wife has stuck in her head is the final image of like her sister's skin and bones, and she looks over her shoulder, kind of like Resident Evil One, and that's the shot that one of the shots in Pet Cemetery that was terrifying throughout the movie, because it would come up with the loud sound, you know, and the, the shrieking, and like that would be one of the more tense scenes. And then I'm watching this one, and I'm like. This is fucking stupid. A dumb waiter? Like you killed off a character in a dumb way in a dumb waiter? I couldn't believe it. And that I like that was one of the changes for me that like as a kid I remember watching Pet Cemetery. The fucking demonic cat didn't bother me. The zombies basically coming back didn't bother me. But the scenes of the sisters, like you, you she's not even a monster she's not even possessed she's just dying from a horrific disease that's what made that so real that's what yeah. carried the emotion and in this one it's just kind of like like john lithgow is basically like bury your cat here and he's like why and he's like no reason just do it and he does it and then they obviously we know it comes it comes back gotta do it yourself yeah and then and then bury like your- let me ask you this you guys have kids right you just buried your cat it revived. It's an asshole now more than ever. Would you go, oh, my child just died. Let's do the same thing to him? As nope. a, I mean, I'm not a parent, so I don't know if I should be able to judge this. You guys can say yes or no. No. So in, in, in the book, uh, I'm going to be this fucking guy every time we talk about a stupid Stephen King book. Uh, in, in the book, like, they give Lewis Creed, like... Uh, through his like inner monologue like you feel for why he does yeah. it um and obviously in this movie you're just, I actually really like, like pet like, cemetery the book yeah it's good but in in this movie when he like digs up his kid you're just like this dude has a fucking phd and yeah he knows this isn't <laughs> medical yeah, science decision. yeah like he knows this is mumba jumba but also, like, how do you sell that story to your wife when she gets back? Like, well, yeah, for, like, well, here, for me, it's like, how do you, I couldn't even sell the cat. Like, <laughs> she saw Mr. Squishy in the road. Like, she knows he's dead. Like, I couldn't sell the fucking cat to my wife. Well, and how it came back so, like, bloody and stuff. And, yeah. and nobody, like, tried to give it a bath. Nobody tried to clean it except the <laughs> right. girl who right. tried to brush her. Pretty yeah. kitty. Oh, your head fell off? Oh, our cat died? Guess what? The cat died. And I'm not going to say it ran away. Fuck that. It's almost like the sixth day where he's like, I'm going to get it cloned. I'm going to get the kitty cloned. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. They, I, that whole aspect they handle. And then, you know, you know what's there's a twist coming, but they try to change. And then, like, I guess they did an okay job at the end when it's just the kid in the car. Like, you feel terrible well, for the kid. The, when it opens... When the scene opens, you see the the house is on fire. It's it's yeah. up on top. And it comes down, and yeah. the car the door is open. You see the trail of blood, and then you see that they go into the house. So the door is already open, and that's that's it brings you back to the you know to the end. Yeah, which means they literally br- brutally murder the the son, and then go bury him, and now it's a nice happy zombie family. Yeah, well, there, there's there's an alternate ending where the yeah. kid actually goes into the house and i believe they're all standing around um but there's also there's scenes cut out of this movie um with john lithgow when they're going uh into the pet cemetery when it's actually not the pet cemetery the the name of the movie in the book is misleading but anyways when they're when they're going to bury church for the first time there's scenes cut from the movie that john lithgow describes kind of the lore of the wendigo that had they been put back they briefly movie, they briefly touch upon the windy car yeah. in it just very yeah. briefly well that was through the book though where it wasn't it when he was showing a book or something well, yeah there's... and then there's the one scene where the windigo is in like the background kind of overlooking yeah 
That's really all they, they kind of go with. Which, to me, the Wendigo is the most terrifying fucking thing about the whole concept. Wendigos are terrifying. <laughs> you ever seen one? No. Have you? Four times. <laughs> and you live to tell about it. Well, I ran. <laughs> I ran so far away. I ran all night and day. God damn it, I was gonna I was gonna quote that song. <laughs> I um, win. Sorry, what, go on. What did you guys think of the the chick who plays Ellie? The the drooping eye like, Ellie? Like zombie version, yeah. Yeah, that was kind of kind of creepy, but kinda of like uh she's not very good at it, but then like there was points there was points of her acting ability where it did show that she was doing really good. But then there's like other parts where you're just like, God, you know, is he going to fucking kill her already? Or, you know, how's he going to get rid of her? I just, I have such a hard time enjoying any child in a role where they're supposed to be scary and murderous. Like, I'm a big dude. I don't care. I'll take a stab wound to the leg. But when I kick you in the chest, little girl, your entire chest cavity rib area is going <laughs> to collapse in into your vital organs and heart. And then I'm going to stomp you. I'm going to stomp your chest in. I'm not afraid of you. It's an embalmed body, so there are no... Well, there's still bones in the body. It's... Yeah, but the organs and stuff. But I mean, after... Yeah, and that's the other thing. When they when they kill her by by the... You know, the, he saves the son. Big twist. The, tr- the tractor trailer takes her out. Mm-hmm. I, I was hoping as they went around the corner, they were going to go all out and just have it rough. And all they went with was the light version of like they just show the body, and, and a little bit of blood on the ladder. The only well, thing, I, the thing, like the thing I can, she, the only thing I could think of was it too went all out, and he's just like you and McGregor or not you and McGregor, um, the guy from Split. I can't remember his name right now. He's staring at the kid in the glass maze, and then Pennywise just eats him, blood fucking everywhere. Yeah, it's Mac like, Boy. yeah, Mac Boy. yeah. Like that's the thing is like I I think you're in the era where going all out is what you need to do. You can't hold back anymore because the underground scene is getting more popular than the fucking big budget horror movies because the big budget ones are worried about offending too many people. Meanwhile, you have movies like Terrifier out there that are wildly entertaining and really fucked up. (laughs) Sorry, let's go on. Oh, no, I was just going to say another thing about that scene where she gets hit by the truck instead of Gage. um, And this obviously didn't happen in the first movie but just because like you said that movies are a darker than you know they they are in the past like yeah. i was hoping that she would be like pretty roughed up and not look like she yeah you know got hit by a bicycle because even my wife was like oh she should have been like fucking grated cheese she yeah should have been as far as the truck drug. slid and everything yeah, yeah. well like, all should... they gave her was that drooping eye you know like I, I I didn't like I said I have a hard time finding like and maybe the, this is probably nothing against the little girl actress but like I didn't find her convincing at all but I never find children convincing in scary horror roles because once again you're a ch- like Leprechaun has never like even when I was the like ten I was bigger than the Leprechaun was and I wasn't afraid of him I was just like, I'll <laughs> kick him in the face like it doesn't matter so I did like, talk shit about Warwick Davis I love War <laughs> no you you want to. You don't want to go into Willow with me, brother. <laughs> I did like the first Gage from the from the previous movie. Yeah, yeah the, he he's was, the same he kid was. from Kindergarten Cop, and yeah, yeah, I liked him too. I'm now he's probably pumping gas somewhere, but, but they, did they did they change <laughs> did they change it just to give like the dead person a voice because she's a better actress as far as dialogue wise? My my truthful opinion is in Hollywood the big thing nowadays is to take things where the little boys and men are the focus and make the little girls and ladies the focus. I think part of it's that. I think part of it's the idea that you can't kill the son because the big twist is she gets taken out. Mm. So it could be a several factors. It could be an artistic direction. I thought it was, I saw it coming. You know, it wasn't one of those, like, I'm sitting there like, uh-huh. Because it's basically a scene from Final Destination where, like, yeah. Yeah. They, they, they build it up and then the pressure's released because he saved the sun and then shock and kill. Heredity, well, did, it, heredity be, did it way better. I thought it was going to be, like, one of the false the false things because, like, they did they did it in the first Pet Cemetery where Gage was out in the street and they grabbed yeah. him and pulled him away. Yeah, for the first time it goes, yeah, where it yeah. gives you that, like, foreshadowing. 
so that's what I thought was going to happen, and then I thought she was going to have the chance to move out of the way. But yeah, was, when I saw the, the the thing jackknife and the, the trailer just going, I was like, oh, this is it. Yeah, yeah. It it literally is and set up like a Final Destination death scene, like the stove pots on, you know, like that sort of thing. Like oh, it's yeah. coming. I can't wait for this. <laughs> The rusty, the rusty, uh, what's it called? The rusty fish hook and everything. Yeah, you know. <laughs> I'm gonna die from tetanus. I got you. Yeah. I, um, I mean, like I said, the production value is really good in the movie. Um, it never feels cheesy to the like in the filmmaker point of view. Like the the, it's always got a nice enough filters and it's shot at different angles, so it's not boring in the in the actual architecture. Um, but it's one of those movies that because it looks as good as it does you want more out of it there was a part where he was having that dream when he was talking to victor i can't say the, the name pascal 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 yeah and he was and he was trying to warn him you know about the cemetery yeah. <laughs> he he comes out that door and you can see how bad the cgi is in that in that part and i think it yeah. does it another time after that and it's just in that same area with the door so I do really like flyover shots, like when they're filmed, obviously, with like a drone footage where it's high above. Uh, Dawn of the Dead, the remake, did that. Like, in, you know, I mean, the original kind of did with what they could. But like, you know, The Shining, too. I kind of like that. Like, you know, even in video gaming, I like the top-down angle, like Diablo type thing. Um, but I do love how they started it off with like the imagery of the house on fire, and they, and they ended it that way. They tied it back together. Um, it's just... A lot of the like I wanted more Lithgow because in my opinion he was the best part of the movie even if he didn't do the main accent like when he's on screen it's 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 like more believable than weird face or anybody else in the movie. Um, one of the I mean I didn't find it violent enough except for the Achilles tendon like I don't in the original yeah. it was like a flip and he just falls and in this one she splits it like she's trying to pop frozen burger yeah, patties sure. from each she, other. She inserts it and then slices yeah. it out. Yeah, she literally his Achilles pops open like you're trying to get chicken pieces apart that are frozen to fucking together. Like, I was like, oh man, that's rough. Like, all right, that's okay. And then, and then <laughs> that, he, he reaches for his gun. Too. Try it, you fucking try it. And she's just like, I'm trying it already. I'm stabbing you to death. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's my thing too with movies nowadays. Like, there's no excuse for not going darker in horror films. No, like no one. No one wants to see like a like a a not scary horror film, and I don't mean no. like just jump scare bullshit. Like I hate I'm at the point in the horror movie genre where I I can't I have a hard time tolerating jump scares anymore, and I because I see no, them for what cheap. they are, which is just yeah exactly it's just cheap. Like nowadays, like I would take a movie over like The Conjuring, which is all atmosphere and like two jump scares, over a lot of like that shitty jump scare horror that's produced right now. Yeah, no. To me, jump scare horror films are for kids. Like, it, there's yeah, no tension, Five Nights at no Freddy's. Yeah, that's that's yeah. my eight year old right now. With the jump scares. I mean, you know, unless you're okay. So unless you're dealing, I, I have a couple exceptions. One of them being Drag Me to Hell. <laughs> that entire movie is jump scares, but it works. Like if you watch that movie on mute, you're like, this movie sucks. If you watch it cranked up, it is one of the scariest fucking movies you'll ever watch. Like that's something well, I, I can't let so. my wife watch. I can't do it. So also the the found footage genre that's acceptable to me, but like in a serious horror film, like no, jump scares are stupid. I love found footage horror movies. Like I, anytime I see one, I get mad when they're bad though. Like if it's not a good one, I'm like piece of shit. Like I'm not tolerant of bad ones at all because there's so many good ones out there nowadays that when a bad one comes along, you're just like it's it for the next two days. You're like. I can't believe I fucking watched that piece of shit. The the semi scene at the beginning did it, it is pretty loud. Um, when you're yeah. watching it, the, the, everything is kind of low as far as the audio goes for the the. the, the I know. hate that when they mix it like that too, where the vocals are way down here, but then a truck comes by and it blows your fucking eardrums out. You're bleeding, and yeah. it's like, I don't know if I should finish this movie. That that did made my that did made uh, make my wife uh, talk in her language, her native language. And <laughs> she was cussing and swearing. She and was, I was praying. Like, she said nice things. <laughs> I just realized my oven's on. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know what's going on here. Welcome to the Alex's Bacon Cookies Hour. <laughs> <laughs> um, we should do one. So, 
does anybody have any kind of impressions they want to wrap up on Pet Cemetery? I mean, there's, I would love to talk a lot more about it, but that's, I think, one of the biggest problems with this movie is it's really devoid of a lot of, um, yeah. you know, like, and that's the other thing is the scenes that are meant to kind of emotionally connect you to him, like when he's home from the hospital and he's sitting down on the on his porch and he's just like, I didn't think I'd see that shit. And the wife is just like, I'll go make you some dinner, champ. Like, basically mm-hmm. pats like, him on the shoulder, like, I'll go fuck off for a yeah. second. And he's over here like, yeah, this dude was really <laughs> fucked up, man. And she's just like, I'll make you some beans. Don't worry about it. And goes in the house. Well, that's, the, so that brings up another good point. Like, uh, the the mom and dad, uh, weird face guy, because I already forgot the actor's name. Jason the Clark. Girl, Jason both, weird face they're, Clark. They're both good, but they also don't have amazing chemistry. No. At all, it's it's almost so, like they don't go they into it, but you feel like they're always on the cusp of a divorce for no reason, just because of the lack of chemistry between the two actors. Alex, so yeah, I don't... so uh, one of the things that for me, like just wrapping it up for me, is uh, I didn't really like much of the music, uh, like how how the how how they this, they scored it, you know. Yeah, the score was okay. It wasn't really generic as hell, from what I can remember. Yeah. Um, something that, that 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 I don't know. Did in the first in the in the original, they they went into a little more with Victor and his death, or, or was his name Victor in that one in, in the original? I can't uh... remember. I want to say it started with a B in the original, but I can't remember, like Blake yeah. or something. But uh, I believe I believe he was riding a bike and then he got hit by a car or something, and they they showed like some of that like just leading up to it, I believe. And with Suddenly, this one, they just, yeah. they just showed the girl running in on the campus and 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 they rolling him in, and he, you know. So I don't know, just like little things like that, especially since he was like a part of the, the you know like the talking to him later on, you know, like he was kind of like a, a character in itself through, throughout the movie. Like, I don't know, man. Like, if it came to the point where my daughter, who I buried in this suspicious pet cemetery, came back and, and murdered my neighbor brutally and was trying to murder my wife or has stabbed my wife several times to the point where she's dead, too, um, I don't think I would hesitate chopping her fucking zombie head off. Mm-hmm. Like, there, I'm sorry, but when, when you've got the shovel here, there's no emotions. I just saw my camera flicker. There's no emotions. Yep. It's just cut her fucking head off. Be yeah, done with that, it. It, it. He had to try to get his point across. You're not my daughter. You're not alive. It's like she's obviously not. Pop that sucker off in this shit. There's Come no. On. And what, what, that, is that him trying to reason with himself to kill his daughter again? Is well, that what no, it is? it's because he loves his daughter. The whole that's that, that's the other thing is like it's so shoehorned in that he loves his daughter. Like it's thrown in your face. Like. Oh, he's tor- like, there's no real legitimate feeling of love that you get from him besides like the be- the story they tell about you know people dying in the beginning is the most sincere moment the family has throughout the entire movie. Mm-hmm. That's like now since you said it earlier, it kind of rings true in my head. It's hard for me, and it's not this movie's fault, but it's hard for me to take movies seriously where the threat is like a very small person or like a child yeah or not even half the size of the like step on them like i don't like maybe it's because i'm a big guy but i know that if i were to take my leg and spartan kick a child let's say (laughs) they wouldn't get up from it if they survived they would have they would have asthma the rest of their life like yeah (laughs) that's the other thing like I'm a product of WWF growing up. You know what I mean? Like, I'll take a chair to her head. Like, why does everybody in this movie seemingly like they don't want to cause harm to the violent, murderous zombie child? Like, the first thing I do is I lock and load. And I give her, you know, it's Corona. Six feet, bitch. Don't come closer. See, I I can attest to that because I I think I recall when we lived in... Claremont, there was a jogger that was running. Oh, up behind me. I didn't think you remembered that. 
And <laughs> and this, you must have scared the shit out of this guy because he like kind of heard him coming and was thrown off and yeah. turned around and like go deck this. Okay, guy. <laughs> so it's like ten o'clock at night, right? <laughs> We're going walking to Dominic's or Jewel, one of them, <laughs> and I hear very fast approaching footsteps coming up behind us. And I turn around and I raise and I was ready to deck the guy. <laughs> He's like, no, 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 no. He's like, no, 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 no. And I was like, oh, you fucking test scared me. Like, it's nighttime. You don't run up behind people. Like, that's why I'm so glad to not be on the north side anymore. Because everybody in this neighborhood locks their fucking doors at night and they don't go for jogs. Like, I, yeah, I didn't think you remembered that, Lewis. <laughs> well, because I just picture it from his point of view, like he's jogging. There's this really big dude, and the big dude just turns around to go and hit him, and he's like, "Ah, oh, shit, don't hit me." I hope he went home, and he's like, "You know, I really shouldn't have run up behind him." Like maybe I am the <laughs> asshole on that one. Like he's telling his I, wife, he's like, "I almost got the shit beat out of me today, babe." And he's, he's like, "What happened?" And he's like, "I ran up behind these two guys jogging, and..." This big dude with a beard almost hit me. <laughs> he should have been running in the street anyway. Well, or there's a whole other, <laughs> like, the north side's got sidewalks on both sides. Like, I, I, it's just my personal opinion that if it's after dark, you don't run up behind people. And it also depends on what part of the neighborhood you're in, because there is that strip where if it's trees out, it, it covers all the street lights and you can't see nothing anyway. We were, we were by Juan's house is where we were walking oh. past. So right before you hit the alley. Oh, okay. And like I said, you don't, you, it's nighttime. You don't run up. If I'm on Lakeshore Drive's jogging bicycle path and you run up behind me, I deserved it. I'm on a walking, running bicycle path. If I'm on a <laughs> sidewalk at 10 o'clock at night, you don't run up behind me. Otherwise, reactions happen. <laughs> yeah, I truthfully did not think you remembered that at all, Lewis <laughs> or Anthony. I just, I just, I, I remember the the look on the dude's <laughs> face. Like he looked like he was gonna shit his pants. I think we were coming back because I remember having like a bag with like two liters and like candy in it. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so let's uh, let's let's wrap up Pet Cemetery. And why is it spelled wrong? Does it explain that in the book? Because I don't remember. Was it just because they were hillbillies? Was it just because they were hillbillies? I don't know, but honestly, it's become a problem because every time I've tried to Google this movie, I fucking misspell it. Me too. And Google doesn't figure it out. Um, What do you want? You want a contracting company? You got a cemetery you're building? What do you need? (laughs) Yeah. Oh, all right. I mean, I'm sorry. So we're going to rate it? I, unless anybody's got anything else they want to say about it, anything they liked or disliked, we'll wrap we'll wrap nah, up our uh, review. It's it's worth a it's worth a watch. It's, if it's you're a, a fan of the original, yeah, if you're a fan of the original, it it strays away from it, but it's fairly loyal to it to the point where you're going to be able to know exactly what happens, even with the you know the the surprises. That, yeah, the story's still there. It's just a little it's different. A, yeah, they changed the skeleton, but it's still bones. They still they they kill a kid. I mean, if you're into that, still. They... And, yeah, if you're a proponent of child murder, you still get one taken out. So, actually, <laughs> last thing I want to say is the line that I like out of the movie is a uh, good thing you're not a fucking vet when the cat when the cat comes back. Tonight. <laughs> <laughs> you're not a fucking vet. I'm over here just thinking about hocus pocus. I'm like, who? What virgin lit a candle? Why is this fucking cat so mean? <laughs> so my wife just made me watch it on 4K. Oh, nice. God. Uh, I'm gonna, All right, so that was my last. Let's do the hot dogs. I'll go first. I'm going to give it two and a half out of five Chicago dogs, frankly. Frankly? Frankly. frankly. Oh, Don't call one. me Shirley. You like that? You like my double frankly, Franks? I do. I High do. production uh, value here. Alex, what about you? Uh... I'm gonna do uh, two and a half as well. It, it was it was good. it was okay. Lewis is like he already threatened to quit, or Anthony threatened to quit last no, no, week no. because we didn't love Halloween. No, no, no. I was gonna say motherfucker because I, that's that's the rating I was gonna. That's how you know that's the true rating the movie deserves, like sixty percentile. It's, it's worth a watch. It's not not great, but it's a way to to burn an hour and a half. But it's one of those like I rate movies on would I buy it, 
and it's the type of movie that I would never purchase. That if it was on a streaming service, in, in a, in a, after I haven't seen it in a while, I would maybe watch it. But it would never be a movie where it was like, damn it, how do I not have Pet Cemetery remake in my library? Like, I'll never <laughs> reference it again to go watch it, frankly. It'll be three in the morning and I can't sleep. And I'm like, I haven't seen that movie in a while. Let's watch it. All right, guys. And our second movie of the night, uh, second remake, uh, is The Texas Chainsaw Man. Tejas! Not to be confused with Texas Chainsaw. Please don't confuse it. Don't eat when you... Okay, so... It's on Hulu, so both are on Hulu. So when you look at when you type in on Hulu the Texas Chainsaw, make sure you do the Chainsaw Massacre from '03 because they have Texas Chainsaw and it's a pile of dog shit and you don't want to waste your time. So if you're on Hulu or wherever it's streaming, make sure you choose the right one, please. You mean Stars? Stars, Stars as well, yeah. That was also during the like, let's make everything 3D. It's the mid 2000s ad. So yeah, it's. Uh, but this one, uh, the, the better remake. Um, so this movie came out in uh, October 17th, 2003. Great date. Uh, great date. Uh, runtime of 98 minutes. Um, this one uh, budget was 9.5 million. Um, that's which not is that low much. Budget. Yeah, that's yeah, pretty low when you think about it. Like, Damn, it's actually pretty good. What that, they have. that shows how much is actually in the cinematography of the style and the grit that comes through when you're obviously not they, there's there's really no CG and it. it's a lot of practical effects too. I yeah. think is why it was can be kept at the lower end. But nine point five million, they ended up making a hundred and seven million. So this movie was shit ten times the uh, expenditure. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. So this was directed by Marcus Nispel. Uh, he's a German uh, producer. Nispel. Uh, <laughs> produced by uh, Michael Bay. Yeah, I know. Uh, Michael Benjamin Bay. He also produced Michael- the Friday the 13th remake. Did he really? Yes, he did. And it's so, awesome. And I, Sorry. It, it is No, it is a great movie. It might still be on Netflix. Uh, I think I own it, so I don't even know. If it is, check it out. It's, it's one of the, like, Texas Chainsaw, this remake, and we'll go into, obviously, our opinions. Um, and the Friday the 13th remake are some of the better remakes, especially of classic characters that you can find. Yeah. And obviously this is a remake of the 1974 uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre by uh, Kim Henkel and Toby Hooper, RIP. Um, so for cast, uh, we have uh, Jessica, B- Jessica Biel as Aaron, mm. um, Jonathan Tucker as Morgan, uh, but she's in a good horror movie called The Ruins, if you've seen The Ruins. Uh, also, um, if you've played Call of Duty World War II, he plays one of your platoonsmen that you befriend, and he's like your best friend in the game. And I, huh. I I, saw his face in this, and I was like, where do I know this guy from? So I looked up his Imdaba, and I realized it was the game, and I was like, dude, they he looks so, like they captured his face really good in the Call of Duty game, because I was able to spot him like that from it. It was... Anyway, sorry, but yeah, I, I, I had one of those moments like, where do I know this dude from? <laughs> um, so you have uh, Erica Learson as Pepper. Um, Mike Vogel as Andy, who just, this guy, like, he just has douche face in every movie he's in. Yeah, that's his character. Like, I don't think he ever got out of, like, bro number four drinking the red Solo cup. <laughs> I'm waiting uh, for you to say my favorite of the movie. Another another douche face, uh, Eric uh, Balfour. Hey, uh, Balfour was okay in Haven, man. Chill. Yeah. He's actually in the. Uh, I believe he's the one of the characters in that District B thirteen, the French uh, parkour action movie. Pretty sure he's in that movie. Oh. oh. It was made by. Uh, there was a remake made. Speaking of remakes, called Brick Mansion, starring Paul Walker. He was also in some weird Fox uh, buddy cop movie, kind of like. Uh, a Tango Cash type thing or something like that. Uh, really? Yeah, he was a cop and he had a you know buddy. I just They're I've like, always remember him from from Tehe Chainsaw Massacre, wearing his face. <laughs> like <laughs> let's see. That he was in what women want? Well, that's where I know him from. 
<laughs> um, so you also have uh, Andrew Baranarski as uh, Thomas Hewitt, his Leatherface, who his thank uh, you. He was awesome in this movie, especially in a scene where he takes off his. Mask. He's awesome, and if you look up his Imdb, he's awesome in everything he does. Like when I was looking at it earlier, and I saw that he's Zangief in the Street Fighter movie, I'm like, "Holy shit, that is Zangief!" Oh, like the in the only mo- moment that you re- they really use CG in this movie is when they uh, show his face without the mask, but you could still see that it is who he is. But he's much. Um, bigger, like fluffier looking in this movie yeah. than he is in re- in real life. I think he also kind of looks like the one character from Vikings, but it's not him. A lot more padding on there. Yeah, it sure looked like like pad like they had like almost like a fat suit on him. Yeah, yeah, he was very husky. I, I think I think it's the favorite that uh Matt was speaking about earlier. I, I hope so. You have the late late right? Oh. He is dead. R.I.P. Yes. Yes. Uh, Ronald Lee Ermy? Er- 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 Ermy, er- brother. Ar Lee Ermy. Sergeant like Gunner. Army. Er- Sergeant Gunner First Class. You call him Gunny. I always, I always think of Full Metal Jacket. That's the only movie you should think of when you think of him. He actually was in a movie about Vietnam called Boys of Company C, uh, which predated um, Full Metal Jacket, where he plays a Sir- Joe Sergeant. A little bit of trivia, and I know I'm going into a fucking actor in a movie, but I love Ar Lee Ermy, so I'm going to do this. I apologize. A little bit of trivia. When he was filming for Full Metal Jacket, he got into a car crash and broke his ribs. Um, and they told him it's going to be six to eight weeks for healing. And rather than him shutting down the production, he decided to go on. So all those scenes where he's screaming at them, he's doing most of those scenes with broken ribs. Oh, wow. On top of that, he was never meant to be an actor in the movie. He was brought on initially as a consultant because he was a legitimate drill sergeant in the Vietnam era. So all those lines and shit, he wrote. All of his dialogue was written by him because Kubrick said, well, you know, I need a, I need somebody to play a drill sergeant. And the guy that was going to be the drill sergeant had to drop out because this the, the filming had been delayed for, uh, I can't remember the reasons, I think whatever it was, but it had been delayed. So because they were filming in London for a while, then production got shut down. And um, so when he came back, the guy couldn't be in the movie anymore. And they asked Ermy if he wanted to portray the drill sergeant. So he wrote all the dialogue and everything. And sorry about that, but Arlie Ermy, yes. And he's delightfully horrible in this movie. Yes. Like, so he's I, a, he's I, a sum bitch. I will argue with you because you said that's the only movie you should think of. But there's a second movie. Toy Story. Uh, he's Sarge in Toy Story. Toy Story, yeah. yeah. Uh, Frighteners. He's the and Frighteners, he, yeah. Frighteners, yeah. Um, Mail Call, if you've ever if you ever watched the History Channel when it was actually about history, Mail Call was a great show where he 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 was himself answering questions that people mail in to him, and it was oh. kind of like a MythBusters, but it was about military shit and very he was good also show. A, he was also a voice in uh, Starship Troopers. Wow, really? Yeah, I don't know if I've but ever caught that audio. When the troopers were receiving their gear for battle, he was a uh, uncredited yeah, he, he for that role. He did VO oh, for one of the old school Fallout uh, top down games too. Yeah, he did. That's I cool. That. I did not know that. Thanks, guys. More trivia now that you've I've added too much already. But I guess so. We could jump into first impressions. Yeah, we probably um, should. I'll go. This movie is awesome. Um, I remember <laughs> when this when this movie had come out though. I remember it being fucking annoying. Uh, the trailer to this yeah. movie, which is cool, but. This was in a day where we weren't cable cutters and we saw uh, fucking commercials twenty four seven, and the the camera aperture like the my favorite and, part and that of trailer the movie, would just man. come on all the time. And I just remember at the time before this movie was out, I was like, I don't even want to fucking see it. I'm so sick of this goddamn trailer. All right, all right so the um, commercial. Try, try oh, sorry, working no. at the video store. Try working at the video store where it's playing on the thing all freaking day okay, long okay but one of the but but that's when movie theaters were awesome so if you were in the movie theater and you saw the trailer like i remember being in the theater and it was pitch black and you see fucking flash pop and it was like what the fuck and then you knew what it was but it's just the atmosphere it was so much better and i love that like that's my one of my favorite like like i always think of that like i literally when we we're my wife and i were watching it and before that scene comes up i'm like yeah <laughs> and she looks at me like shut the fuck up and then literally <laughs> as she's looking at me on tv 
And she's just like, uh, you son of a bitch. I love that about the movie. I, I, first Impressions is I love it because it, it's literally, if you've watched, especially recently, the original Texas Chainsaw, it is fucking tame. I challenge anybody to watch that movie and find me gore level violence. And I'm not talking I mean, I'm not talking like, oh, he put her on a hook. That's gore. No, 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 no. I mean legitimate bloody violence. And yeah. the original doesn't have that. And this really took it to the modern era of like, we've bypassed slashers. We're in the Saw era. Let's make this fucking really gritty. And they did a hell of a good job on it. Yeah, and I, I, I love this movie. I, I, again, like I said on a previous episode, I always think of my son being born when I think of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Um, and I, I like all the films in the series. Um, I do love Texas Chainsaw Massacre too. I know a lot of people do not. So isn't that the one with um, Bill Mosley where he plays one of the hillbilly cousins? Or I is that Dennis three? Hopper's- in that movie too. The, 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 maybe uh, it's might... the third one where like they, they focus on the like extended family and Bill Mosley, who you uh, who is also uh, what's his face from Devil's Rejects. He's uh, Otis, I believe. Um, um, the main guy, you know, he's pretty badass in a few of his flicks. Uh, but yeah, I think he's that's one of his early roles. Is I think Texas Chainsaw Three. Yeah, so an- another thing about Texas Chainsaw and basically any big horror movie you could think of, a lot of them were based off of Ed Gein, uh, who was a Wisconsin killer. Yeah. Um, but a-, a lot of these movies, like you, if you're not into true crime, you you know, you think like, oh, they're based off this one person. Ed Gein only killed two people, supposedly. And really, he was just a weirdo who liked playing with dead bodies that he dug up from uh graves he uh, he wasn't like a prolific serial killer but it, it's it's funny to me that all of these movies that kind of like have inspiration like leatherface is not not even remotely yeah, they, close they go from like a <laughs> farmer who decided to kill a couple people and play with their bodies to like he's look at all these cars in his backyard there's dozens of them <laughs> uh, yeah i get it but yeah that that'll be it for me for first impressions alex what did you what did you think of the movie um, aside from the trailer and being annoying as hell, cause I, I, you know, when I was working it was um, on all eight of the TVs and the sound was yeah. blaring cause the sound system either was too quiet or it disturbed children's fillings in their teeth as they walked through. Yeah. Um, I, I, I thought it was, I thought it was a pretty good movie. Um, when I first, when I first saw it was coming out, I did not like the actors that were in it though at the time. So that was a big, Just that was a big thing about yeah, but like every time I see her, I was just thinking about that movie Summer Catch, and that's it. it like, I don't think I've ever seen that. Is that with Freddie uh, Prince Jones or Junior? Yeah, or his name yeah. This but, is um, this is one of those movies where as soon as it starts, you're like, I want all of these people to die. You don't feel bad for any of them at any point. You're yeah. just like, nah, I'm rooting for uh, Leatherface at this point. <laughs> but um, it, it I after watching the entire movie this time, I I, I did like it. Um. I like I liked how some of the scenes when they were starting out, you know, I like I like the the scenery setting up. You know, you're like, oh shit, this is the '70s. There's, there's going to be some hippies going on. It, it kicks in pretty Leonard's quickly. Like it yeah. goes from like road trip movie to gun vagina gun in like yeah. four minutes. So so we should just jump into this. Um, <laughs> well, let's, got... let's wrap up your let's wrap you up, and then we'll we'll you go ahead and go into your full review. All right. Well, I'm 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 good. I'm good on the the. We can wrap up there. Uh, so for my review, um, so just starting out, you know, you got these this group of people that are traveling in, in, in this hot ass van, no air conditioning. Smells uh, like well, sex. They they did have an air conditioner. It, it just wasn't working. It was a fan. <laughs> I like that scene where he's like, "Can you do something about the AC?" <laughs> ding, ding, like, ding. Nope. <laughs> that was pretty bad. Yeah, I like that. Uh, but yeah, you're driving down a rural road and and you see somebody like you, you just, like not in a million in years. Rural road. What's that? Well, well I mean, not was, in a million years, me. What, the seventies, technically. But, so you know what? I would have been in the seventies, an alive motherfucker, because not in a million years. <laughs> well, they've already picked up one person, which is Pepper. Which they're hoping to have some. I'm assuming weird orgy in a tent somewhere. Yeah, ex- except for that one annoying kid uh, that you said is the the, the, the Call of Duty I, guy. I like him. There's always in when they, especially for the Morgan. movies that are set in the throwbacks, like seventies era. 
there's always a nerdy friend who's still the stoner. Like, look at Cabin in the Woods. Genius, Throwing out the <laughs> genius nerdy friend, still the stoner of the group. They, they like look at the pattern. And I like the fact that they added that in here, where he's just like the kind of like I'm I'm a stoner, but I'm not fucking stupid. Something's not right here. Like statistically speaking, you could, you're gonna get an STD or some shit like that. Yeah, yeah <laughs> it, like in the whole time when they're going on, and like when basically it's like let's just fucking go, man. Like at the point where they're saying we should just take off, I would have left an hour and a half before. Yeah, that that was gonna get to there. Um, it was gonna go with with all the fucking red flags that I kept seeing thrown at me everywhere. Yeah, you you show up and they say, yeah, the sheriff said he'll meet you. Like, what the fuck do you mean? There's a fucking dead body in my van. That's the one thing that even like Jen asked me, and I, I couldn't give her an answer. How what the confusion with the sheriff? Was he a legitimate sheriff? Was he not a legitimate sheriff? Was there another sheriff that was legitimately coming to check everything out, but everything went awry before? They don't answer that very well. I don't. I don't think he was. No. Was it all like the whole town and that and the whole area was all wrapped up in that family? So no matter what, it was designed to drive people to the house. Is yeah, that pretty it? Pretty much. Is that that's what it looked like as as things the went on. Stations, was, the mother, he's the grandpa or whatever it is. Then you, you know they go into more. But they yeah. don't a hundred percent clarify trailer. that. But it's kind of just left to assume that the fact is that the whole town is basically just the family and their cooperatives. Yeah. Uh, let's skip back a little bit to the vagina gun that you were speaking about. The vagina gun. <laughs> that fucking shot, though, when, when she fucking... She's like, no, no, don't take me back. And she just fucking... And they, the camera goes right through the fucking hole. It, like I said, man, the way they directed this movie is really great. Like, <laughs> it goes through the hole, through the... And they show the window... Um, I don't know why, but there's, you know, between, like I said, I'm also, as I'm doing more editing for the, this glorious product we put out, I'm, ex- I'm appreciating filters and things like that. So kind of yeah. as I'm getting more into being a, like a film guy, it's always neat to see like a filter or an angle that catches your eye. Cause one of the things that I love about this movie is when he's chasing after people and the amount of like carbon dioxide he's putting in the air from the smoke from his chainsaw. It's such an awesome visual effect to have a backlight behind that and his fat ass running with smoke <laughs> all over him from this chain. It's just, I don't know, from, from this movie for me is a, a, a huge visual, um, it's kind of like a visual like piece of candy. It's not, you know. Also, the character's dialogue was, was also something that kept pulling me in there, um, especially, uh, I'm, 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 I'm sorry, Corporal, what's his name? How, how do you say it? Arlie Ermy. Gunner, Gunner, Army. Gunner, Gunner Sergeant First Class. You don't have to clue that every time, but you just call him Gunner or you, you, the sheriff. You can call him Lee Ermy. I've heard him call that by his friends. So Lermy, Lermy, yeah. But just like his lines in that in this movie right there, when they first introduce him, yeah, a real piece of shit off the bat. Yeah, and that would have been like another fucking red flag about hey, as soon as this guy's fucking done, let's get the fuck out yeah. of here. Oh, he he just took her body and he's gonna come back later. He didn't yeah. run. He didn't run our license plate. It's the seventies. Get the fuck out of here! Yeah. Um. So yeah. I mean, if, if you want to, uh, who who would you like to speak next? Ed and I'm gonna let Lewis uh, go because, um, frankly, you may have noticed a pattern. I tend to trample over your guys' fun and just say <laughs> things that you guys are gonna say. So I would. I, I think the the new pattern is I'm gonna go last and then I'm gonna like just clean up house. May, may I say one more thing? I'm sorry, I was gonna pass it off, but uh, but one of the other things that he, that he says is the when he goes. I smell bullshit. I just yeah, yeah. I lost it when he like, said that. Well, that's so. the other thing is there's a girl with a hole in her head that killed herself. He knows who this girl is, yet it's the 70s and is like, is that reefer? When I saw that, I'm like, oh. that's probably how it was back then too. Yeah, yeah. All right, so that was my last part. So one one of my favorite lines in this movie is uh, when they come across the uh, the little kid with the fucking meth head teeth. Oh yeah, Jebediah. Jebediah. Yeah, and and Andy, Mike Mike Vogel's character calls him a fucking mutant. It's like kind of under his breath. Yeah, but I was dying laughing. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I the the kills in this movie were fucking cool. Satisfying. Although, yeah, Andy's character though, Mike Vogel again. So the he runs away from Leatherface, ends up getting his leg cut off. And, and it's uh, okay. I, I'm sorry for interrupting you, but I have to go back to it while we're there. The scenery when that happens too, 
It's the wind flowing. It's white sheets everywhere. Yeah. Out of nowhere comes the chainsaw, and they show the blood streak across it. It's like, if you want to remake a horror movie, especially a violent one, this is how you do it. Were the sheets the really clean, though? Well, I they mean, they're kind probably, of they probably play a piss stain more than likely. They, they look like they've been sitting there for fucking ages. But it, compared to Blood Red, it was a, yeah. little, a little cleaner. Sorry, Lewis. I'm going to interrupt you multiple scene. times this episode and then apologize for it. Even though you can tell I don't really mean it because I keep doing it. <laughs> it's a it's a, a Chicago it's a Midwest sorry yeah like yeah basically like I think it's that's empty. what that's what Jersey and Chicago have in common common it's kind of like we just talk over each other and then even though we still get the point though somehow <laughs> <laughs> no so so the thing the the thing that kind of and it's just the the horror movie snob in me that kind of makes fun of movies so he gets his leg cut off then he's meat hooked and somehow does not bleed out yeah. until Jessica Biel uh, runs into him again. That was my thing. I actually well, told my wife, I was like, rather than like murdering him, why don't you just lift him off the hook and he'll bleed out within minutes? She did try to lift him up, but one of the things that was stopping with the leg was, you know, salt. Leatherface did salt it, and then he wrapped it in fucking, you know, meat, I, meat he, paper. He literally wrapped it like he was like wrapping cured fucking bacon or something. Yeah, he, he was curing. He was curing the meat. So, but there's there's a scene before he puts him up on the hook where Andy's just sitting on the floor with his leg missing, and there's a fucking pool of blood. Leatherface so does like, just walk over it too. Like, he literally yeah. walks over it like you walk over a sock on the ground. Like, it's just nothing. Well, when he picks him up, there's also that co- coagulated blood that sticks to it as he's picking him which, up. Which is a nice touch. <laughs> so, and actually, the, the kill before that, when he kills... Um, Laboo? Uh, Kemper Le- is, Laboo? is Laboo's Kemp. character's name. Yeah, Kemp, yeah. Um, even, even that scene is cool where he kind of just clocks him and immediately goes back in the room. Well, see, that's um, that's the scene from the trailer. Like, every trailer yeah. had that scene where he, the door opens and he's standing behind him. And I was so happy it was a, a, a scene they keep in the movie. Because a lot of the times they have that shit and then it's not in the movie at all. It. Right. Yeah. And I was, because it really is, like, when you watch the first Saw, for me, the first Saw, the whole movie is made by the ending. When he just goes, game over, and it, you the, the door slams shut, light goes away, and the movie literally ends with screaming. Um, there's a certain bit of horror that touches a psychological point, I think, to that, of that just 100% in that moment, you know you're fucking dead. And as soon as he, he came up behind him and hit him with the hammer, as a viewer, it's like, damn, they're killing the boyfriend already? <laughs> you know, I was like, well, that's pretty quick, wow. Sorry, yeah, and for me, the uh, the mask for Leatherface, the, the two masks he wears are fucking awesome in this movie. Um, especially there's the scene where he actually takes off the one mask and you see that he's missing. Yeah, that's the only yeah. scene that I could really tell that was heavy, heavily CGI. It's a little funky yeah. in that scene, but that's like the only scene where I was like, meh. But it is 2003. I mean, it's, it's an old movie by today's standards. No, and it is, but th- this movie holds up, uh, like especially the the gore and the makeup effects in it, and for it being still rough, that low budget of a of a film, um, which I mean, this was nine this million, was by, I think you said. Yeah, and it was distributed by New Line Cinema. They were putting out good horror movies back then. Their um, special effects team was really good in this well, one. Well, that's when Scream, I think, was still their cash cow, like where it just ended yeah. being their cash cow. Yeah, which they're making another screen movie too. I um, want to see it. I like this. As dumb as they are, I like them. But I mean, there's there there was a prequel sequel that came out to this movie in 2006, uh, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the beginning. I don't know if any of you guys had seen that. It's a prequel to the story. I don't know if it necessarily connects to this movie at all, though. So it's designed to be a prequel before. He was in the basement living with the fucked up family doing that. It was like his where he first starts. But I don't think it's designed to be a legitimate prequel to this movie, though. I think this is like a standalone one off. Yeah, but I man, I'll throw it to you for your opinions. I guess my last thoughts, though, is like, really, if you if you watch this movie and you watch 
uh, the tech or Texas Chainsaw as well because I've watched them both. Oh my god, <laughs> that movie is so bad compared to this one. Nightmare. I think it's really like it's like they they told them, all right, here's some money, and the dudes who were normally they were like making YouTube commercials, and they went to this. It was like, it's it's bad. It's worse than television programming is now. Well, it's also in in that movie they they weirdly tried to kind of humanize Leatherface. Where in, in this one, it's kind of fucked up because, the I mean the family they don't go out of their way, like they're not killing people and bringing them back to their town. They kind of just do their own thing, and the you know this this group of young kids happens to just be swinging through that like, area like so many others have prior. Like you get yeah, the fe- yeah, but, but that's the thing though is you get the feeling like. The if you look at some of the cars, you're looking at like fifty one Chevys, yeah. which means it's not just been him. The family's been doing this for decades. This is what they do. It's literally the family from Resident Evil Seven. Like exactly, this is what they do. Before Leatherface, they were doing it at the you know they call him Junior. She at towards the end of the movie, she calls Arlie Ermy Junior, which means the father was the one who has carried this tradition down from his whatever. And I think that's one of the things that they don't focus a whole lot on, on that, yeah, Leatherface is the main boogeyman here, but the family's the real villain. They've been doing this for decades to people. But that's that's one thing I like that this movie does is it builds up the whole town. I mean, you even have the scene where Jessica Beale ends up uh, running into that mobile home, yeah. yeah, and these people are just as fucked up, and it's kind of all part of the plan. Like well, don't, They don't have a phone. Like, well, they were connected yeah. to the family. Yeah, but it, it makes me, it's its kind of a, a, not a good comparison, but it makes me think of The Shining in that the hotel is its own character. Like, in, instead of like it just character. leaning on Leatherface, yeah. So, uh, but man, I'll let you, I'll let you take over. Well, I'll actually branch that off and expand that idea as, um, to, to further your point. She goes from the mansion to the meat factory. Yeah. So mm-hmm. it's all like on the same area of land and it's all familiar to the family. It's all connected. The meat factory I thought was a good scene. I mean the 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 scene where she's hiding in the locker and he's kind of going through. Um <laughs> and the like I said the chainsaws ripping so you have like the backlight and then the smoke from the chainsaws filling the hall and uh that whole scene was really good. That's where he takes some damage and and finally you see that's where the humanity of his character comes in. Um, he's already got the cut from his leg from where he fell like a fat oaf in the razor yeah. wire. Um, like, I'm sorry. Like, I like the fact that they added it in there, but it is still kind of like this motherfucker is running the same speed as Olympic track runners to chase these people, but he clumsily falls through the fence. Okay. And then uh, yelps like a yeah. fucking dog. <laughs> you know, it's like, we, <laughs> we get it. We get it. It hurts, buddy. Sorry. Uh, but I like that scene, and then um, one of the things I think this movie does, oh, I don't know, a thousand times better than the original is the very ending, where in the original he's doing his ballet twist with the chainsaw, and he's got his <laughs> little dance maneuver, and in this one it's just that slow draw to his face, where you see his eyes looking at her just like, I'm gonna fucking kill you. Like, it's got a, there's, the first one you walk away from it like, that was terrifyingly goofy. This one, you walk away from it like, oh, shit, he, he really is legitimately scary. Like, that's the difference. The first one's, like, just a tall, goofy-looking dude. And this one, he's a beast of a man, and he's deformed, and he's fucked up mentally. And it's literally, they treat him like an animal. And, they, and he's now an amputee. Yeah, well, but, like, the, I'm, I know I'm bouncing, but the scene with the grandfather, or whatever he is to him, and the cane, the very first word that he kills uh, uh, Kemper, and he's, boom, boom. Come on, boy! Boom! And it's, you know, you're really, it's, the, you know what's coming, but still when that door swings open, it's like, oh, I'm rooting for him in this movie. Like, fuck it. My favorite characters. Like, the Leatherface is, you're not supposed to root for him, but he really is such a, a, a nasty, nasty uh, slasher villain in this one. That's why I say I think they did this, like, if you ask me which is better, I'm not going to go classic on this one. The remake in this case is a better product. Uh, maybe it's my generation. Maybe it's because I didn't have the advantage of it being the 70s and being a time frame when people literally, like kids, just spent all hours at night outside. And um, 
part of me wishes I would have had that to where when you walked out of a movie theater, you didn't have every 10 feet of street light. You didn't yeah. have a lot of the safeties that we I grew up with, perhaps. You know, even our neighborhood was so-so when we were young, but you didn't have... The, the 70s was, it was the fucking Wild West in certain areas. So there is something to be said when the original came out, and once again, Ed Gain and all these serial killers were real. Like, when was the last time this country had a fucking serial killer? So that's the thing is, like, in that time frame, I could see the original being terrifying. But for me, I remember sitting in the movie theater and just being like, holy shit, like, this is awesome. It's gory. I'm, I don't get scared, really. I never have, but it was tense as fuck. Like, they did it right. Uh, and that's, I'm going to bounce it to, to Alex now. So one of the things about what you were saying is, like, when, when you would leave the movie theater back in the 70s, if you were, depending on where you're at, like, in a rural area, you would leave and you'd be in a cornfield walking home down exactly a dark where, road. Exactly. And you only have lives. the moonlight. So yeah, that would that would scare the shit out of me back then if, if if I was to see the first movie, maybe because you know you don't know what the hell's going on. But uh it this was this was a pretty good fucking scary um uh, scary vibe to it for me. The the part where he's in the he's in the meat factory and she's hiding in the the meat or the one of the is lockers like you were saying. Yeah, and, and then <laughs> that's, that's the first way that he, he gets her. He, he gets her out of the the cow the cow body. But um, when she's hiding in the locker and, the, and that other locker's vi- you know vibrating and making a noise, he thinks she's in there, and he gets there, and it's just one of the fucking pigs that, that she put yeah, in there. Yeah, a cute little piglet. And she hacks off his his arm that with a cleaver that she found. I thought at first I thought it was just going to be like a couple hacks, you know, and then he's going to like hit her and then she's going to run she off went for gold. <laughs> yeah, and then I was like, "Damn, I don't remember this part. I don't, I don't remember that shit happening." Yeah, he gets pretty fucked up in this movie, considering he's the big bad villain. Yeah. Um. Well, and another another favorite part of mine with this was at the end when you can see that she's fucking fed up with the family. And she fucking gets in the car after she goes and, and gets runs that over. Yeah, head. she she I I'm pretty sure it's a quadruple tap. Yeah, she she runs over from quite a bit. Yeah, he's he's a goner. <laughs> but uh, those those are those were some of the things that that were really fucking um, cool to see. You know, as far as the film goes. Uh, Lewis, do you have anything else? Yeah, no. I mean, just to to kind of throw it back to Pet Cemetery. I mean, you have the first movie <laughs> that came out in '89, and then the remake. It's it's like I said with with newer movies. And granted, this movie came out in 2003. If it if they remade it now, you can do a lot more with gore. Oh, yeah. You can get away with a lot more. Well, not that, but the technology is better. So the yeah. days, like you got to remember, like digital blood in movies for a long time is the worst looking thing in the world, and they're yeah. finally being able to get to the point where even digital blood is starting to look better than it ever has. So like, that's what I was saying, kind of in the beginning, is like that's why. The movie studios, these AAA budget horror movies are, are kind of fucked because things like Shudder prove to you the underground is where it's at still. And there are no limits you can't push. So when you see a movie that comes out to theaters, um, I don't know. You know I mean, anything, may, even Invisible Man, while it was violent, it there was certain boundaries it wouldn't push. And that was meant for theaters. So that's why when you see a movie that doesn't push those boundaries, it's so annoying because it's like you can go ahead. Do your thing. It will be accepted yeah, and, and people will love it. <laughs> that's that's why I like this movie, because if you if you compare it to the original, like all of those elements are still there and it's like they just fucking took the dial up to ten. They fed it Mountain um, Dew. <laughs> and even even for this movie being what fucking seventeen years old. In it its own right a that, classic. Yeah, it, it has that style to it where you, you could be mistaken for thinking that this movie came out like within the last couple of years. And like she still looks great. Movie. So that helps. She's still a charm. Has Bale, aged a she's day. still great? Yeah, oh yeah. I mean, she's married to Justin Timberlake and he's like got the fountain. Oh of shit, she is, him, yeah. So. And he brought sexy back, didn't he? I'm pretty sure his blood is, is like, you can probably cure cancer with it, so... They, they they feast on uh, the blood of the in, uh, what is it called the <laughs> they just have baby <laughs> harvesting. You look great, thanks. We're having another ritual next month. Oh, 
Right on, right on. Any babies I know? Nah, orphans. Oh. So we keep talking about the gore and stuff of this. Can we can we like start from the beginning to end about just brief uh, of the of the deaths? Because I, I did I did like almost every single one. Yeah, I mean, well, you start with the boyfriend Kemper, where he gets. Well, we po- start. What we start out with? Uh, well, suicide girl. Yeah. Yeah. She um she she literally sits there and pulls a revolver. Now I don't want to go into how that works. That was yeah. not a small gun. Not only that, but she no. pulled it out horizontally. Anyone else notice it didn't come out like like barrel end to handle? It came out like sideways. Yeah. And then we may explain we, why well, there's so much blood. Test. Matt has guns. We need you to put one in your ass on camera. One, se- see how that <laughs> one second. Hold on. <laughs> That that's that can, would, we, can we just take his word for it if he does it off camera? I would prefer for you, we for you that. audio listeners. He just came back with a rifle. I don't know yeah. how this is going to turn out. I've got it in six inches. Hold on. <laughs> uh, no, um, but and the other thing that we I, we haven't mentioned yet was he takes the gun and puts it in his ankle holster. It's his fucking gun, which, which happens yeah. to be empty. Yeah, it's his gun. That's you, it's beat, his, you, it's beat, his gun. you beat me to the you beat me to that man. Um, I was about. To- Say it, but <laughs> when her death is is filmed really cool, you know it's gonna happen. From like you know, like it's gonna go sour real quick. And Once does, when she starts getting aggravated, yeah, and, yeah, she gets that weirdness. And like eight. then later on, Jessica Biel emulates that same weirdness with the trucker. Almost, yeah. she doesn't pull like a, a vagina gun out, but you know, right. Um, and then you have the the boyfriend is Kemper. He gets moited. Right. Uh, Alex, do you would you like to you want to label out I'll, the, I'll, the deaths? Kemper's Kemper's is uh, not something I want to talk about, but I, w- I wanted oh, to okay. keep going. Kem- yeah, Kemper starts it all. That gives you the first shot, really, of uh, Leatherface. He hits him with a hammer. Then also those scenes go directly into kind of him showing his death factory in the basement, which is done beautifully in this movie. It's gross. It's dripping constantly. There's blood everywhere. There's jarred organs. Like Whoever Moist. was in charge of designing Leatherface's lair... Give that man a fucking raise. Well, hell, even their kitchen was designed that way too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With the I, I called it uh, odd beef jerky hanging everywhere, and like pantyhose for some reason. Um, <laughs> yeah, no. Whoever made whoever designed the house was like seriously that guy or girl should do more work. It, it was a one sick mind in there. Yeah, like it was meticulous too. Like shit was everywhere throughout the house. Yeah. So after after Kemp was uh, the blonde shit. dude, he gets he gets his leg cut off, and then okay, so Andy, he doesn't yeah. even quite get killed yet. Yeah, he doesn't get killed. He gets captured, legless. Right, but then he moves on to and he gets I his guess leg Morgan. wrapped like basically bacon at a deli. Morgan, oh no, no, not Morgan. Um, Pe- Pepper. She, Pepper's the yeah. she's sawed in half. Yeah, she. Well, <laughs> I like that scene because you don't. There's no blood in it, but you see the fuzzies from her that jacket is, like everywhere, jacket. and then that's the first shot where he looks up and it's the boyfriend's face, Kemper's face on his. Mm-hmm. That I love that scene where he's just like, "Hello, darling." <laughs> but, but that that scene where where he saws, uh, what is it, Pepper? Yeah, like th- that's the one scene where I was like, this this movie wasn't afraid to go there for most of. Maybe that would have pushed it over for rating. I don't know if it was if there was blood there. Well, well I like just the fact yeah. that like like she thinks she's safe by running away, and he like a dog goes directly for the one that's out in the open. Like forgets about Je- he's literally got Jessica Biel's hair in his hand and realizes she's out in the open and just jumps off the fucking the the hood of the car. And chase because it's after about her. the hunt. It's about the hunt. He literally yeah. is an animal. Yeah. Uh, we we didn't say anything about how Kemp gets his fucking face peeled either. No, and he, not he only that, but they also show him like pulling out the needle and thread that he's going to use to sew yeah. it to his fucking mask. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, I believe uh, Morgan. Morgan is the the next one after that. Well, no, he gets um, injured and then captured. He's actually the second to. Yeah, he's the last one but, to die. But just how how he gets to it though, it, it, that axe to the back. Yeah, yeah. I that, I that never understand fun. that in these movies. Like these are injuries that in real life, like you're not. There's no chance of you running away. Wouldn't it have severed his spine? Like oh, right he, in the center. He'd have been totally fucked. Like the. Well, also even even before that when. Uh, um, <laughs> Excuse me. Gunner hits him in the fucking face with that oh. bottle. 
Like yeah. immediately, I was just like, Fuck. when <laughs> when when, he, when they have something in common for Leonard yeah. Skinner, yeah. And he, <laughs> I they like have something it. else in common. No teeth. Harley Ermy, man, his dialogues. I I just always he's like, I like Skinner. We got something in common. You know, th- those were my favorite parts. Was was his character? Yeah, his I, his lines were truly the best. Like he just plays the the fucked up, corrupt piece of shit sheriff so well. So uh, then, uh, sorry, go ahead. No, I was gonna say what what else we got, but go ahead. Uh, well, then I mean, when you really go into it, there's he Morgan's the last death, but he doesn't die right. till the end because she doubles back around, finds him, and they try to escape. However, his is one of the worst deaths. Yes. Very, you want to describe that for me, Alex? So she hides him in a little closet area when they find this little cabin. They yeah, he should have just shut the fuck up, by the way. Yeah, well, he, he's got he's got a fucking gaping hole in his back. He's got some missing teeth. He's, he's kind of hurting. He's, had, he's had a rough he's kinda day. He's kind of hurting. He's had a rough day. But uh, so when they when they find this cabin, they they put the the, the sofa in front of the door, uh, like that ever blocks somebody with a chainsaw. By fucking, the way, that's a great shot though of him running at them with the smoke of the chainsaw, and you see yeah. it through the door frame, and it's just I'm gonna kill you, like you know, it's like in his head, he's like I'm gonna kill this bitch, I'm gonna kill this bitch, like he's you know he's got like the curly shuffle going almost, but with the chainsaw. Um, great shot though. <laughs> So so she she gets him to the to the little closet and she hides him and she goes off and she hides somewhere, and then uh, Leatherface gets inside and fuck and shit I believe up. he I believe I believe he's like knocking shit around and then he finds him. So no so what happens is, is he's oh, about she- to discover her, so he jumps out and makes noise to distract him and he basically okay. there's a little bit of a struggle and he lifts him up yeah. like a toddler and just puts him oh. on the, the the goddamn lamp fixture. He also still has his hands handcuffed. Yeah, he by the handcuffs like a toddler. He's like, "Here you go, little fella." And so he, he puts pop- him on a chandelier that would have fucking fell in in the real world. He's like if it's my fat ass, that's coming down immediately, bro. <laughs> you better find a, a wood support beam somewhere because this shit ain't gonna work. Wouldn't even get a half circle. Just no, immediately. the 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 framing the fixture would literally snap and I would fall and probably hurt my ankle. Is what would happen. <laughs> like, uh, but but, then, uh, but he's tiny, so he's just hanging. So while he's while he's hanging around waiting for an autograph or some shit, fucking Leatherface, <laughs> fucking he's just at that point he knew like when you the, the the way the actor played it too like at that point is like, well I'm fucked and even Jessica Biel rather than trying to help at this point just screams yeah. no and he's runs like, out of the fucking house like no yep. as she's she, running she does like a little leap over the the sofa right yeah. through the door yeah like but it's just funny because she's literally screaming no as she's sprinting out of the door like he's fucked no. It's, I found that funny how she's like, you're not even trying at this point. You know he's dead, but you're still going to scream no as you run away. Like, what sense does that make? So so what happens next is uh, Leatherface decides to saw some logs and shit. He goes right between the legs and just oh, fucking yeah. brings that fucking Yeah, he, w- he definitely wipes from uh, front to back on that one. That's a, <laughs> that's a terrifier. Yeah, yeah, that was, I wish they, but they that's, that was a little edited, though. They didn't go super gore. You were basically it was like off camera almost, so you were left to kind of just kind of yeah. fill in the blanks. Unfortunately, I would have gone a little bit more extreme with that myself. Yeah, which but, is uh, another thing. This movie went there a bunch. Like, why not just, just why not show me some gore in this scene where you're splitting a dude in fucking half from his crotch? Well, do you think at that time uh, there was probably so much gore already that y- you're pushing their their X rated l- limit? Yeah, I mean we've had weird weird periods of censorship in this country. Like mm-hmm. the the Jason sequels are, are all muted because of the censorship that was going on, and some of the movies in the mid two thousands that really like you had movies like Hostel that were revved up to be the 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 worst, and they were kind of like meh, and then you had movies that could have legitimately pushed it and kind of refrained from it, which is you know kind of disappointing. Well, yeah, and then you get to, like, the, you have the Saws, you know, stuff like that. It, it, it is weird. It's Which the weird. first Saw is not a violent movie. And no, I, when I not. say violent, I mean blood content. There's very little blood in that movie. Yeah. No, it wasn't, it wasn't quite gore porn. No, and once, the second one got worse as far as that, but I still really like the second one. By the, the third one's a total piece of shit. That's where they were like, let's just figure out how to use blood. <laughs> like there was no real like fun and that's when they got into the convoluted storyline of like 
yeah, it's Jigsaw, but it's also this dude. But it's also this chick. It, I was just by number three, you're like, fuck these this entire series. So I'm I'm hoping Kid Rock does something new with it where it's not a total total piece of garbage. But the he's gonna tra- have his music in there. The trailer, that. like, what's that? I know he's gonna have his music in the soundtrack. You ever talk to a white man inside of a death trap? <laughs> that would be funny if his character, like, for no reason, just out of anywhere, like goes up to the dead body they find and it's like what happened here you gonna tell me like this isn't a comedy chris what are you doing this isn't a fucking adam sandler's netflix movie stop <laughs> <laughs> sorry go ahead uh, and and i believe that was the, the the very very last one would be uh the sheriff yeah he would be the last kill which is a really like satisfying like all right you go girl <laughs> Yeah, just just like some of the stuff that he said, because like you said, he was a real piece of work. That fucking sheriff. Oh, from top to bottom, you there's never a moment where you're like, I like this guy. It's just like, what a piece of shit. Yeah, so so that that rounds out uh, the the cast of deaths there. All right. Um, anything else? Any notable things we'd like to say that we have not said yet? No, um, I mean, I this this is definitely definitely a, a movie worth checking out. Uh, even if you have not seen the original, um, yeah, I mean it, it does complement it if you if you watch this before the original or you kind of watch them back. Yeah, you'll back. see how much better filmmaking became in thirty years. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this this is up there on my list uh, for must watch, uh, especially if you if you appreciate slasher movies uh, and you want to see a, a newer modern take on on one of the great ones. Yeah, like, if you were to ask me, like, I don't know, later on in the episode, what my favorite remake horror movies are, this would be definitely on that list. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Let's do the, uh, uh, oh, sorry, Alex, go ahead. No, I was going to say, one of the things that, that I kept being reminded of is uh, Robert Pinkerton, uh, Robert Picton. He was a serial killer in Canada. I don't know, Lewis, you might know him. Canadian Anthony. serial killer? Yeah, he I'm was gonna a, cut you into pieces now, eh? He was a pig farmer, oh, and geez. I heard on I heard on a podcast that I, and and this just kept reminding me of him, because this, this guy was pretty much the same. When he would kill these people, he would he would you know target like women and stuff, and then he would feed them to his pigs, and they would never find the bodies. So there would be all these cars and stuff that the other brother would like sell and shit and reduce, reuse, recycle. I guess <laughs> <clears throat> the soil and green is people. And a couple of things were actually he would sell human meat too, so that's one of the things because he was actually a, a you know pig farmer. <clears throat> but yeah, that, that's one of the things that kept reminding me of that. So off um, topic. I, I wish I w- and I'm hoping because the rumor was Leonardo DiCaprio was going to be in a movie about it, but I really want an H. H. Holmes movie, like a good one made. They haven't made one. The you book Devil in the White City is great, but I want an H. H. Holmes movie, like a legitimate one. The house, like you let the movie the last. Half hour be them literally being slaughtered or 45 minutes in the House of Horrors. But give me an H.H. H. Holmes movie. Um, with that said, my displeasure for Hollywood not making movies about characters I wish they would. <laughs> Let's review this some bitch. I'm going to go first. Um, I'm going to give it a four out of five. I do love this movie. It's, it's amongst one of my top horror movie picks, but... Um, it's one of those things where if, like, if they had, like, an under, unrated director's cut that legitimately added another 20 minutes of something, I would be ver- very grateful for it, and that would push it to a five. But, yeah, I'm going to give it four delicious Chicago hot dogs out of five. Lewis, uh, how many wieners uh, yeah, are you going to give ahead. this bad boy? Uh, man, we're, we're striking the same numbers. I'm also going to go with a four. This is honestly one of those horror movies that if it was 20 minutes longer or so, I'd totally be fine with it. It is short at, uh, like, 98 minutes, man. That's a short movie. Yeah, and I, just to, I, it sounds terrible, but just like if there were more people for Leatherface to have killed, uh, <laughs> just to see some different kills. Well, like it, they had opportunities. Movie, you're, you're rooting for the bad guy. Yeah, well, that's the movie, though. Like the, the first half hour, well, 20 minutes even with the suicide, and it's got the great dialogue, but you're still the whole time, you're like, I want to see Leatherface. I want him to pull out with that chainsaw and ghost somebody right now. But I, I think that also just might be the three fucked up host of the show. I don't think any normal person probably has those thoughts. Well, one of the things that we didn't talk about, which I'm surprised we didn't, was um, 
how it ended with the kind of like found footage at the end with when yeah the, the yeah. sheriff yeah yeah we didn't it brings anything. back the chee yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> and it's a really the first, cool way to end the movie there's there's the the clip after that that scene where it's it goes back into like a, a it goes out of the black and white into like just just uh, broadcast footage. And one of the lines is like the cop. It basically said something like the cops didn't like fully check the parameters. Yeah, they didn't see. They didn't secure video. the perimeter, and two oh, two yeah. officers were murdered yeah. because of it. The, the narrator, John John Larquette. Yeah. But where, where does he flee? Like he got two officers and fleed. He's a big motherfucker in a meat a meat packer's coat with a chainsaw. Where did he go? He also got one arm, one and a arm, fucking, and a bum leg. Like he's in he's in Florida now. Yeah, he's he's Dexter. <laughs> um. So with that with that being said, you said four, Anthony, for for yeah. your Chicago hot dogs. Um. I'm I'm gonna do four, maybe four and a half, only because I I when I first watched this movie, I didn't like any of the actors because of who they were and what they were in before, and after watching this now, again, um, I did enjoy their acting ability because it was great to see people scream like that. Yeah, I mean, you got to kind of give this movie credit is like before this, Jessica Biel wasn't known for anything serious. It was like teen, teen movies. Right. And then she hit right. this and it was like, OK, she's kind of a scream queen because she does a hell of a job in the movie. I mean, she she plays the role really well. Um, well, even but for for you saying you, you didn't like the actors at first, that's where a horror movie can either like rope me in or lose me. If the acting is bad and I want them to get murdered like even more that's cool if it's bad like it, it's it's like a flip of a coin you really. don't want to be you don't want to be indifferent like you don't want to yeah. be yeah. watching the movie going all right whatever is going to happen needs to fucking happen i don't have any attachment to anything in this but the whole goddamn movie could be everybody can be killed by a volcano right now and it wouldn't fucking matter to me let's just get moving here <laughs> so uh, yeah that was my four and a half out of those uh, four and five. a half okay um, all right, so we've got another movie here we're going to talk about in just a second. Lewis, what is that movie? All right, guys, and our last movie of the night Feature is film. The Invisible Man. No, just kidding. Hollow Man. Uh... <laughs> Don't worry, there's no clay face in this movie. <laughs> uh, so this movie came out 20 years ago, which is crazy. Um August 4th, uh, 2000. Um, this movie had a, uh, has a runtime of 112 minutes, although supposedly there is a director's cut that is 119 minutes. Um, for a... Uh, we didn't watch that uh, version, so if you're hoping for a deep dive into the difference seven minutes makes, ain't happening. Ain't gonna happen. Yeah. What? So, uh, budget for this was $95 million, which... Uh, Apparently, fifty million of that was just on special effects, um, which we'll get that. to that. In a I minute. thought you were going to say to Kevin Bacon. No, yeah. <laughs> his wiener. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, it's not. Cool. Uh, so box office one hundred and ninety point two million. Holy shit! Um, yeah, so th this movie just barely made its money back. Um, so this film was directed by. Paul Verhoeven. 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 Hail Verhoeven. Uh, I believe this was after he did, right after he did um, Starship Troopers. Yeah. Um, so for cast, uh, which we kind of kind of have a bit of an all-star cast here. Uh, so you have uh, Kevin Bacon as Dr. Sebastian Kane. What an even, is, evil villain, terrible name for a character. It is. It's such a fucking douchey, egotistical yeah. name. Um, you have Elizabeth Shue, or the Shoe, as she likes to be called, as Linda Does she McKay. Know? Uh, yeah, she, uh, people know her. They call her the Shoe. Okay. Uh, I'm part of the group uh, that calls She's in my, my Boost Mobile 5 as the Shoe. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, you have uh, Josh Brolin as Thanos, which uh, he like it as... looks like a fucking baby face. Like he's he like does. thirty-five in this role, and he still looks like a baby face because he's in his fifties now. This is twenty years ago. He's at least thirty, and he looks like he's a child still. Yes, yeah, so you also have Kim Dickens as uh, Sarah Kennedy, 
um, who, uh, God, I have things to say about her character. Um, <laughs> also, uh, Greg Grunberg, who I always think of uh, heroes when I think yeah, of him. The cop. Uh, he plays uh, Carter Abbey, the emergency medical technician. Uh, Joey Slotnick as Frank Chase. Joey Slotnick is the same person in every movie. Yeah, he just been. plays the wise cracking, uh, better than yeah. you, kind of swarmy but lovable. Um, and then you have a bunch of other people. Uh, but yeah, that's that's kind of the main ensemble in this movie. Um, and obviously this film, it's it's a remake per se of the H.G. Wells classic, The Invisible Man. Um, Matt would argue that the movie The Invisible Man is better than this movie, uh, but we are going to talk about why it's not. I wouldn't um, argue that at all. That's that's a fabrication. <laughs> Fake news. You almost made it through the whole thing without him even not. Fake Fuck. news. Um, so I guess we'll go. We'll start with first impressions, and Matt, we'll start with you because this movie is is up there for you. I love this movie. Uh, so I don't really have any. I mean, our first impressions kind of null. I mean, I can kind of give you how I felt when I saw it in theaters, and I remember in theaters it was just it had the, the great mixture of like I liked Kevin Bacon. Because the movies like Stir of Echoes, everything from Animal House to... He was in a lot of cool shit. I mean, uh, Tremors, you know, all sorts of stuff. So I really... <laughs> um, no, I, um, but I like Kevin Bacon and then... I still like Kevin Bacon. But the whole concept of it was just cool. And th there's a certain mix of... It's really kind of a black comedy drama until mm -hmm. it flips its switch. Um, and once again, uh, this is to the detriment of that piece of shit, Invisible Man. Um, the story actually fits the Invisible Man story. It's actually the idea of a man being driven insane by an experiment that has turned him invisible. Um, it has nothing to do with uh, domestic violence and camera suits and um, asshole cop friends. It's just, it's, it's... Basically, if you if you listen to last week's review of of or whenever we did Invisible Man, I don't even remember weeks, two weeks yeah. ago. If you listen to that episode, um, everything I said about that horse shit does not apply here. <laughs> but that's my initial. I'll go into deeper when we're ready because I, 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 I there's there's no first impression for me. I'm just gonna go fucking f flying through it. So Alex, um, when you first saw this, how did you feel? Um. I don't know how to put it, man. It's 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 an it enjoyable really movie. It's 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 violent in in certain spots. It's really violent. Um, like it gets like like I said, when it flips that switch, it goes full gore. Yeah, there there is a story, like you said. Um, I don't know, and with the cast, you know, seeing them now, how, how they how they've you know made themselves now. Well, not all of them, but but most of them. Um. They're, they're, they're all like it was all surprising to see them again as young as they are i mean this is what 20 years ago you said it's 2000 yeah. so now the other aspect for me like as a kid i loved elizabeth shoe from back to the future adventures and baby the shoe the shoe i used to love her i had a little crush on the shoe and then you get to see the shoe in a thong as my how old was i in 2000 yeah, but that haircut. This movie is just fucking chalked with bad haircuts, man. Dude, I literally looked at my wife and I was like, I do not like that hair on the shoe. I don't like it. Like, it's, I, I, I out loud said that. I said, <laughs> Why is there hair on your shoe in the first I, place? I said the shoe's haircut in this movie does not do her pretty face justice. Simple as that. The shoe's better than that haircut. But uh, I'm 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 gonna skip first first impressions about it because it's it's yeah. I it's, tell you what, Alex, you know what? Go full bore into it. Let me know. Let's just go into it, man. All right. So we've got Kevin Bacon who starts off as a you know he's Sebastian Kane. This fucking guy starts off as like you know he's 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 trying to figure something out. You know he's he's trying to figure out how to how to stabilize this fucking serum. To, which I can only assume it's basically somebody who programmed Math Blaster made this same software apparently. That's making genomes attached to each other is just this simple as. Were were the computer graphics really like that back then? No, there's no science. Uh, for one thing, they're doing something Can... that didn't become relevant for another six to ten years, which is screen sharing. So can we also talk about how fucking crystal clear their webcam is? Back then, it was like. 
240p well, well, and you were lucky wait, to make out on. a fucking eyeball. They are working for the government, and supposedly the government has technology that's supposed to be how many years ahead of us? Hold on, guys. I'm going to sequence a genome. <laughs> Sequenced. Oh, fooey. Like, it didn't work. The whole scientist aspect of this movie is ludicrous, but go on, Alex. So w when you start seeing his character and... and he he break, you know has this little breakthrough and you know he after he looks up in the sky and says you should be working whatever on his ceiling he's got that little writing on the walls yeah. he's he's kind of a fucking dick um his, yeah, his, yeah. like that's the thing and, and that's one of the i think the overarching stories that a movie like invisible man completely misses is there's a corruption element so you start a guy who's already kind of corrupt by the little bit of power he does have yeah and you you add insanity sleep deprivation and even more godlike power of nobody knowing who, where you are and they show how the movie takes him from this kind of like lovable but prick basically mm -hmm. and turns him into what he becomes at the end and that's why when i say a movie like invisible man doesn't do the story the original story any sort of justice it's that shit that's missing yeah so um we can move on to Lewis there about, about the rest of this, but uh, we're, we're going to keep bouncing back and forth after yeah. this. But I just wanted to get that out there. He's he's a fucking a dick from this from the start. You can see it as he, as it goes along. Yeah. And with one of your guys' favorite scenes about the car that's coming up, I guess. <laughs> no. So yeah. So so yeah, you we can't because we reviewed Invisible Man. You can't not compare it. But like, so my biggest problem with Invisible Man is you're you're told this guy is a piece of shit. But you're not shown that he is. And like Alex said in the beginning of this movie, like you see Kevin Bacon's character and you're like, this guy's kind of a fucking douche. Yeah, he's a douche. So man. like you you have that starting point of like he's a piece of shit. He becomes more of a piece of shit. Mm -hmm. Whereas an invisible man, you're just like, oh, he's a bad guy. Don't worry about it. He's a bad guy. Just he, go with it. He, we'll, we'll figure something out know, later. By waking up in a bed unhappy, that totally shows me that he must be abusing you. My fucking camera just went freaky again. Don't acknowledge guys. it. So I know I probably shouldn't, but it's freaking the shit out of me. Um, After you get dragged under your desk, then we'll say something. Yeah, okay? yeah. Should we acknowledge <laughs> yeah. this? Um, and then, like, you can like they build it upon everything where they really like the, his whole character flaw is his ego. Like when he pulls into the parking lot, all of the cars are like blue collar, like pickup trucks and sedans, and he's the only motherfucker driving driving a uh, drop top sports car. Mm -hmm. Like, they show that he really is, like, the egotistical prick, basically, that where you could see the corruption can kind of fill the gaps of his personality. Sorry, yeah, though. and I, the 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 weird thing in this movie is the, like, quote-unquote, them working for the government. Yeah, yeah. And it's in, like, the, the, the facility is just, like, not up to what government code would be. Also... So going back to uh, what's what's her nuts, uh, Kim Kim Dickens, who's, <laughs> who's cast as the feisty and rational veterinarian of the Ra team, who rational? disapproves of animal tests. Yeah, <laughs> rational. Uh, disapproves of animal testing. So there's a scene in the movie where they uh, get oh. the gorilla back to. Uh, kind of back to seeing him he's not invisible anymore through a and pretty Kevin... a pretty rough like scene of the gorilla basically going into several levels of shock yeah yeah but then then kevin bacon's character who is a piece of shit says something kind of in an asshole way of like well we're gonna cut her up and you know we're basically slice study the brain, her brain. Yeah. yeah and and this this chick who's part of this team who probably had to go through all of these clearances just pulls like a like why would we do that and it's like what like you're a scientist well he like, even tells her too he's like well she's not a scientist she's the best vet oh, in the yeah. area so yeah. he even he even uh, tells her he's like we're not running a petting zoo why do you think they're here <laughs> but like the funny thing is the, the and that's the like character kind of the, the plot holes though the juxtaposition because while they're doing the procedure and he's like uh, and the the grill is basically almost dying at the end of it, it, the gorilla stabilizes, and he's like, how she's doing, Doc? And she's stable. He's got this, like, told you she wouldn't die. And then moments later, he's like, I want to get her on the table to slice her fucking brain up. <laughs> and then, but he makes, sure. that, he makes that joke of, like, I don't want to slice her up for a few weeks. Don't worry. Yeah, not today. They're also, I mean, we're going to jump around, but there also is a scene when uh, Sebastian 
Sebastian's character is uh I don't know if they've they've made him invisible, like he's about to go invisible or he's coming back, but he's trying to tell the shoe that he can't really breathe and she yells at the <laughs> veterinarian like what's going on and she turns her face and looks at the monitor and she's like he can't breathe and it's like no fucking shit he just said that like, i was telling you to intubate dipshit yeah. <laughs> but uh um, you're a Matt, veterinarian you're a doctor today so you're Matt, doing your I'll fucking you... job on humans lady i know it's not a big gorilla but you can do something uh actually Matt, before i throw it to you i will say that 50 million of this movie went to the the cgi in it and there are times where the CGI dips and looks awful, but if you watch this movie and remind yourself that this came out 20 years ago, yeah, this movie looks great. Well, I feel like the areas where the CGI doesn't look so great is where they try too much. Where they try to it, make it too realistic, and unfortunately, for the time, they couldn't. Do you think that's where the budget went on the computers? Just to show those crystal clear uh, <laughs> cameras? That and Kevin Bacon's penis. The thermal <laughs> camera, yeah. I, that scene is a little weird when, like, he first is invisible and he's playing around. And he's just, like, he literally comes up to the ladies and, like, what's up, ladies? And has his arms around him. Meanwhile, his yeah. dangles just dingling. Like, he's just flopping goo-goo over there. Like, he's hiding behind, crouched behind one of the office desks with his dick flailing around. Like, <laughs> like you know, that, I, I got to applaud Kevin Bacon for being, like, all right, we'll show my dick on thermal. Like, I guess. No, you do, you do wall. see you yeah. do see Kevin Bacon for a split second in this movie. Yeah, unfortunately, my wife, yeah. My wife was like, "Oh my God, was that his penis?" I was like, uh, "Yeah." You do get to see six, so I, six inches of bacon. Yeah. I, so I I did I did look up because I was interested his on penis on, size. On, That's weird. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I was I was interested on how they film the scenes because. Um, he was basically Kevin bacon, he was in the Charlie Day green suit for like half the movie. <laughs> Yeah, and also, well, so they they'd film this, they'd film a scene twice with him kind of off to the side and vocalizing, and then they'd also film it again with him in a green suit. So I don't. That's pretty cool because I initially when I watched the movie, I was like, I wonder if he would just like kind of sat out and just did like voiceover or whatever. Um, mm. But no, he's actually in the scenes. They just yeah. do it twice. And then <laughs> I remember when it came out, seeing that like some of the behind the scenes shit they show of him filming it. Where, like, all of those scenes where, like, it, especially at the end when he's fighting him and all that, where he's in the water when the sprinklers are, that's all bacon in a green screen. Like, and they had, like, the dots for the mocap and everything for his facial expressions. Like, he put in some work for that movie. It was a big movie for its time as far as, like, anticipation and technology. Yeah, but I, uh, oh man, there's so many things about this movie. But Matt, I'll let you. Uh, Actually, real quick, I feel like I may have cut off Alex. Alex, did you have something to say? No, I was gonna say a lot of times uh, in, in in today's movies, they use like fucking just a regular stick with a tennis ball just to show like a position where people are gonna be. Well, if they're a goddamn Marvel movie, they do. Yeah. <laughs> no. No. Yeah, and the Marvel's notorious for that. Not only that, but Iron Man's wearing fucking red pajamas and everything else is green screen. That's why when you watch the movie, a, a movie with a budget that large, Iron Man's fucking head still looks like it doesn't belong in his armor at all. How? They can emulate <laughs> Thor raining lightning and thunder from the sky. They can't get Downey Jr.'s head to not look like it's floating in the suit. So what you're saying is November we're going to cover some Marvel movies? I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll review some of them, but frankly, I'm done with the comic book craze like i like the movie i like the movies when it was kind of a novelty now it's like if there's not another marvel movie in the next six months i may cry like i'm tired of the fanboyism of it like their movies grow up but get ready to watch marvel avengers on disney plus for 35 fucking dollars because the theaters will still be closed in 2022 <laughs> you're ready to over like better invite your friends over to justify the fucking rental fee anyways <laughs> I love I, I love this movie. This is truly one of my favorites. Um, and even even though I'm kind of watching, we've touched upon how we kind of watch things in more of a critical outlook. I, there's still not many scenes where um, I, I I couldn't really pick this movie apart. Um, you know, it has your your normal kind of some of the characters do dumb shit, and that's how they like the I can't remember her character's name, but the the only black character I think in the entire movie, uh, where he strangu strangulates with the medical tubing. 
yeah. like the first of his kills really inside the facility um, where, you know, she just doubles back. Like, that was really one of the only dumb decisions. You know, you got to hand it to the writers giving Elizabeth Shue one of the, or the Shue, I'm sorry, as one of the smartest moments of the movie where she jerry-rigs a fucking magnetic uh, thing out of the paddles, the, the defib, in order to open the door in the freezer. Um, and we, we, we bounce back and forth, I know, but, we, you know, it really is a movie where, from a critical point of view and why I, I compare it to Invisible Man, and why I feel Invisible Man was such a disappointment was because this movie has the elements that that storyline requires to be the same storyline. And it's as simple as this. Like we said, you give a guy who's a, they got a little bit of power and he's already got the ego. He's already slightly corrupted by it. And you watch his descent where, frankly, this movie is somewhat slow. You know, he's, he's under for like 10 days before he really starts to crack. And yeah. then they have the scene where he, he does crack, where... Um, he sees that that Josh Brolin and, and the shoe are in a relationship, um, and he knows that it's all kind of coming to an end. They're going to shut this shit down because shit has gone completely wrong, and he breaks. And you know, it, and not only that, but they talk about how, he, how his eyelids are translucent, so he can't so he sleep. Can't he can't, blink. you know, yeah, he, yeah. he can't blink or anything. It's always, you know, so he's got sleep deprivation. It's fucking with him mentally. He's got the concept of holy shit. I have a lot of power just by taking off this silicone mask. Um, and it really, you see the character go from... He showed at the beginning, yeah. Yeah, you see him kind of go from, okay, he's an asshole. We get it, to he's murderous. There's, he's got, he doesn't care about anything else. In his mind, he's going to destroy this whole fucking place, walk away, and forever be able to do whatever the hell he wants. And it's the ultimate godlike power. And then, like I said, the last 25 minutes, half hour... He goes full on slash your psychopath. Yeah. Where I mean, I mean, some of the kills in this movie are great too, and I just want to point out how awkward and weird the fucking scene is towards the beginning, when the veterinarian is staying overnight, and he goes and gropes yeah. up her titty. Mm -hmm. Like it's awkward on a couple of us. It just looks weird for one thing. Like as an, as a kid, you're like haha booby, but as an adult, it's like this is fucking weird. And then yeah. you got to think about it. Somebody literally wore a green screen suit and groped this chick's tit. Like to film the, 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 the scene. It's a weird thing. And I, I, it's one of those scenes where they can completely remove it. And it, I wouldn't care either way. It's just useless yeah. to me. Um, but it, 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 showed, it showed what where his psyche was, where though, that, too. About where that power started to kind of infect line, almost. The line yeah. that he's crossing. And... Um, and then, like I say, you see him progress, and you know his his whole thing ends up being he ends up killing one of the uh, military generals because they kind of finally come out and confess to him. And and for me, like I, I it was so downplayed, like it was no big deal. Like he's they're just like, what should we be doing? And he's like, think about clearing out your office. Like, yeah. oh, no big deal. We just turned a guy invisible, and he's fucking murderous and insane now and we we did this against what you said to do but all i got i'm just getting fired huh no charges all right cool cool and then of course <laughs> you know the, there's the the scene that they showed in every trailer tv spot for that movie where he's smoking the cigar by the pool and the smoke goes out and it's kevin bacon um but yeah no, i like i said i love this movie there's some shit as far as the cgi is concerned that gets a little wonky at times the storyline is a little atypical, but it still sticks to the Invisible Man kind of template better than... I mean, can you name a better movie that's stuck to that template? I can't. The uh, Shed. The, oh, God damn that movie. Um, <laughs> but, it, and it's, like I said, it's my wife, we're, we're, we're literally getting to the point right before shit really hits the fan, and she's like, how do they call this a horror movie? And I'm like, I told you, it's not scary. And then literally okay. that last 30 minutes turns it into a horror movie because you have the deaths ranging from Joey Slotnick getting the crowbar through him. Then you get Josh Brolin who doesn't die but gets the crowbar into him. You've got... And Greg. Uh-huh. Who's... Greg yeah, was picked... One of, the, then, one of the more violent deaths where he drops him on the beam and it's like... <laughs> like the sound yeah. effect was even pretty brutal. Then you have... Uh, I mean... I. I the whole scene of them trying to escape was... I mean, the movie's put together well. Like, the, the layers it does, it's literally like a roller coaster that kind of eases you into it and then does a triple barrel roll. Like, 
and, and they use logic too. So like when he's trying to hide from the thermal imaging, he turns up the heat. He he wipes all it. their accesses out of there. He's yeah. got the only one who's got it. Like, uh, yeah, the heat thing was really cool. Um, and then I do like the one line that the shoe has, where um, <laughs> where she makes the makeshift flamethrower. And she's like, nice. you want to be God? I'll show you fucking God. And she's just like, and he's just literally like screaming and flailing because she's lighting him on fire. Um, the, uh, yeah, I don't know, man. I remember the trailers too, where like they gave away too much, but the, there's the, like when he's picking up the crowbar in the water. And I remember being a kid thinking like, that's really cool CG. Because you got to remember 2000, think of it in this perspective. End of Days came out in 99. And the CG in that was downright terrible, the CG that was in it. Like, there's this scene notably where he's hanging from the helicopter and it looks like it was filmed in the fucking 70s. Like, 2000 technology wasn't... I mean, you had the Willennium music video. Think of it in that fucking perspective and this still looks this good. I mean, you did have the show Reboot, which ended in 2001. That was like the pinnacle of amazing. That was, I, I, I remember loving that as a kid, but it <laughs> literally was like, if you look at it now, it's like somebody in an office somewhere was like, can you make a Pixar movie, but a TV show and it looks absolutely like dog shit <laughs> about computers? I still love Reboot. It's got a soft spot in my heart, but it's, um, so, yeah. Hollow, Hollow Man, like I'm, I can watch gore porn movies i can watch violent movies i i will side with matt's wife on this one uh even though she didn't watch this scene the one scene that i watched when i was little and even now that made me like wince yeah is the yeah, fucking yeah dog scene well because it's like, so brutal you don't even see it, a dog it's all thermal it's all cg but the big thing is they show the arterial splatter Mm -hmm. in the cage the thermal and literally we're watching it and it gets to, like the scene kicks in where he's pacing back and forth and he's got and he's just yelling at like arguing with himself and he's got the sheet over his head and i'm fumbling for the goddamn remote because i know what's coming and my wife being the huge dog lover she is once again to put this in perspective we have not watched the movie american psycho past the point where he stomps al's dog to death because she started to tear up and i turned the movie off that's how much she loves animals so you Such can imagine an idea of a dog being taken by its front legs and slammed into a cage with a puddle of goo spraying out of it in thermal might be upsetting. So I, I skipped past it and she kind of looked at me. I was like, you don't want to watch that scene. And she's like, okay. So, yeah, it's one of those, like, I'm not a bit like, like, like I said, I mean, one of the dumbest things I thought in the shed was they killed off the best actor, which was the dog. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's it, like, like, that's the thing. There's a certain switch that twists where the movie for the first half is pretty mild. It's pretty tame. Yeah. And then it goes into full on, like, what the it fuck mode? Like goes. Yeah. Yeah. And when it starts, it doesn't stop till the end. And speaking of the end, I love the whole end chase scene where he's the fight scene. Alex, you got something to say. Go. Oh, no, I was going to say that the, the whole ending about the elevator shit. Um, yeah. When it when it catches when it catches what was it her arm or his arm her the, arm where it's going arm. down and it just is that yeah and yeah that's I, when I, I every time I see that scene I'm like oh damn that's got a ouch that's yeah. a shoulder half that just got taken off it, as it goes up as as the explosion happens and it goes up and and my wife's sitting there watching it with me and she's like she's like oh she's like she's like are they gonna get caught by the fire I said nope I said uh, the elevator's coming back down she goes what I was like, yeah watch. <laughs> Well, that's like, if it goes up, it's going to come down. One of the things that don't make sense, one of the lines, that, and it's just a small, stupid line, but the, the shoe and, and Josh Brolin are going into the elevator shaft, and she looks at him, and she goes, can you climb? And he's like, I guess I have to. It's like, you're in great shape. Like, you're, you, you're obviously <laughs> you're a, hel a healthy young man. Like, you mean to tell he's me you can't tape, climb a bro. fucking ladder? He's been duct taped, so he's been fixed, right? It doesn't duct tape fix everything? You would be fucking surprised, brother. What stops I mean, the bleeding? Not a gaping hole from a crowbar, but uh, a lot of the you, know, you can make you can seal boats with it. Certain types. <laughs> I like uh, when they're when they're stuck in the freezer and Josh Brolin is on the ground, and he's like, "I can't feel anything. I'm cold." And my my wife was watching. She's like. Well, you're laying on the ground in the fucking freezer. Yeah, of course up, you're stupid. cold. 
<laughs> well, that's the other thing. Is like when you think about it, if Josh Brolin would have died in the movie, which he doesn't, spoiler, obviously, it would have been a total waste of time to revive. Like, it would have been such a son of a bitch to revive him. Because literally, he could have had the best death in this scenario possible, which is slowly falling asleep and freezing to death. And yeah. if you revive him just to get brutally murdered at the end, it's like such a kick in the ass. So, but then she also, like, she gets him out of the freezer, obviously, sets a fire in a barrel and just walks away. <laughs> yeah, and like, and as somebody who enjoys camping and building fires, her fire would not have lit that well. Like, she literally no. just fluffed some paper in there. And she's like, here you go. Hopefully you don't burn to death. I'm going to go, some, you know. Some not Matrix print, uh, paper from the printer. Yeah, it's some, like, exactly. Like, that shit's got You're lacquer right. on it. It ain't going to fucking burn that easy. It's cardboard, <laughs> practically. Are you kidding me? Um, can we can we talk about the best scene in the movie? Which uh, is? When he is driving in mm. his Porsche, singing that song. I want to know what that song is. You can play to dad. <laughs> He's like bobbing his head like it's a really good song. Like, yeah, man, I'm jazzed up to go to work today as an underground fucking scientist making shit invisible, man. Um, so there is a joke in the movie <laughs> that I'm going to recite right now because I haven't memorized. Why do I haven't memorized? Well, this joke, Matt was in... Sixth grade, and this joke was told to all of his friends. I don't know, should I even tell the joke? Probably not, but um, well, real quick, uh, the song is called Power Struggle by whom? Uh, by Sauna, and is on the album One Minute Science. So, Superman's so, flying so over the planet, right? And he's looking down on everything, and he sees Wonder Woman, and she's on the rooftop in Metropolis, butt-ass naked sand tan uh, sun tanning. And he swoops down there and he goes, man, I would love to get a piece of that Wonder Woman. And he's flying over and he goes, wait a second, I'm fucking Superman. I could swoop down there, do what I need to do real fucking quick. She won't even know I'm there. So he does. He speeds up, swoops down there, does what he has to do, gets back up into the atmosphere, feels great, he's all happy. Wonder Woman sits up and goes, what the fuck was that? And the Invisible Man says, I don't know, but my ass hurts. <laughs> I have loved that joke since the day I heard it in that movie. Sorry, I had to do it. Go on. Uh, my wife was like, God, this movie has such bad yeah, language. It, it really is a vulgar. Like, I forgot how vulgar of a movie it was for a second. Well, I did too. And then, like, as, as I was, like, almost halfway through it, I was like, oh, yeah, this is the guy who did Robocop. It makes sense. Well, like, uh, is it, like I also was like, these are scientists, right? So the scene where Josh Brolin and like he observes Josh Brolin in the shoe coming to like that they're dating, like they're also really good looking scientists like, too. Josh Not Brolin all. isn't in the door for two seconds before her pants are like down. Yeah, like my wife was watching. She's I like, almost started Geez. without you. Yeah, yeah. Literally, I watched analyze was... that the other day, and the one line is it when. He he's down there and Billy Crystal's telling him he needs to stop having sex so loud. She starts moaning and he, he's like, "What the fuck is that?" And he's like, "I told her if I don't come back in two minutes to start without me." Like, what what average woman is fiending that bad? Like, don't get me wrong, Josh Brolin's a handsome fella, but you're over here. You're like, "I was gonna start without you." I was sitting in the mirror diddling myself, waiting for you to get here. You're a scientist. Like, you don't like. Come on. Or maybe unless I don't know about the scientific community and they're all just like sex crazed people that have orgies when they're not doing experiments. I don't know. It's it's possible. I guess if, no, you, if you're part of the scientific them. community, let me know. They're all very very boring people. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like these people, all are like Hollywood scientists, where it's like by day makes things invisible, by night fornication and drinking. It's like all right, fucking American Pie presents Hollow Man. <laughs> so i do i did find one thing about like the production of this movie so after starship troopers uh great the director movie. Had, had said he wanted to make a movie that was toned down on the levels of sex and violence in his next film and he made hollow man which it seems like he forgot that he wanted to tone either of those two down well he literally added scenes that didn't need to be in there for sex 
Like there's yeah. the whole there's the whole rape scene that yeah. doesn't need to be in the movie. It really just like I guess you could say it demonstrates his evilness coming in, but there's so much other stuff in the movie that demonstrates that. Like if he would have just fucked with her, like fucked with the mirror and stuff and kind of observed yeah. her, but I do really and once again, I'm not a fan of these type scenes as part of it, but I don't feel and it was it, needed. He brags about it later to uh, the great character. Yeah, I do actually do really like that line and reference, and that's why I feel like leaving it more ambiguous to did he or didn't he would right. have been more beneficial to the character because he's got that he's line so where he's scared. like, well, there was this one girl. And he's like, what'd you do? And he's like, I scared her a little bit. And it's clearly not what happened. He rapes her. Mm-hmm. That yeah, scene gets says, too dark. Liked it. Yeah, yeah. That's a a dark movie it, it really, it really it, underneath the layers of like kevin bacon charm and the, and the comedy that they put in there the, it's it's a really dark fucked up movie and like i said i'm gonna keep doing this but when you compare it to a movie like invisible man where invisible man not only doesn't follow the story but literally lays all of its cars on the table there's no mystery in that movie and this one you at least get the character progression of like oh shit he's really going to extremes here he's just murdering everybody what the fuck and how many slasher movies or, or, or like horror movies do you get an, an actual like a character progression in, in the in the person who's doing the killing? Exactly, and like that's the other thing is you he if you want to look at it this way, we've gone over it with Texas Chainsaw. In this movie, takes that original story and it enhances it to a to a modern degree. It gives it well, that little bit of push. In Texas Chainsaw, uh, the one that we reviewed, it they did they did talk a little bit about how he had a skin disease, which I'm sorry we didn't cover that. Um, yeah, it, but it's such a throwaway it, line. It's like that poor baby. Yeah. You know, my poor baby has this issue. But but you can you can do like one of our complaints with Invisible Man was that it's if you go into a movie straight in with just implied bias of like yeah. the bad guy being bad guy, you can do that like in Texas Chainsaw Massacre if you have a story good enough to to make it believable. Well, that's how we so, talked about it. It's got to be full on evil. Or not. Like, that's the thing is... Yeah, it's all or nothing. Invisible Man, the only... the only, And this is one of the biggest problems when we talked about it, was the only reason for any of the characters to exist and do what they do, you don't get any choice. As a viewer, you don't get to decide. You're told, she's abused, she's good guy. He's the abuser, he's bad guy. The only reason those characters have... There's no backstory or anything to them. It's just, you have to understand that he's the bad guy, she's the good guy... And that's the motivation throughout the entire movie because those are the roles they play. And that was the biggest problem with that movie, unlike this movie, where they're all kind of Hollywoody, but he's obviously the jackass. He's the one who lets it go to his head. He's the one with the ego. And you see how that ego that he has builds up into a murderous psychopath. Well, like once I said, once again, there's also those lines in there given by like Josh Brolin and Elizabeth Shue where it's. You know, he's been under for longer than anything we've ever done. It's got to be fucking with him. You know, he's got, it's got to be messing with him. So they still, even the supporting cast, gets those lines where they give him a little bit of humanity, which he has to have. Okay, and that's the thing, is that like, like the Invisible Man and, the, and him had no humanity. Zero. And they he designed it that way. Possessive guy. He was just big, bad, piece of shit, abusive boyfriend. That's that's his character in a nutshell. That's all you get. And then it, what do they do in the movie? They just carry that through with, well, he's going to do things that a big, bad, piece of shit, abusing his boyfriend would do. All right, so anything else to, we want to say about Hollow Man? Oh, I, I, one thing I do like, towards the end when she lights him on fire, like throughout the movie when you see him in the thermal and shit, his hair is visible in the thermal. And then when she cooks him with the flamethrower... He doesn't have any more hair. She, like, burns it all yeah. off of him. I really like oh. that kind of touch. Um, but that's when the CG also takes a weird turn when they try to emulate his muscle structure and his bones starting to come through and be seen because he gets electrocuted. Um, that's where they try too much to make it look realistic. And it's like, you know, it comes off looking a little wonky at this point. Back then, it, you know, it was superb. Yeah. We ready to rate this, some bitch? Yeah. Sure. Um, Lewis, how many wieners are you giving it? Oh, man. I'm going to go with a 
four and a half. Delicious hot dogs. Alex? Can we do six bacons? No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, four, four and a half. Let's see. I, I did, I did enjoy, it and there was some, there was some like the last twenty, twenty five minutes. You were saying that was uh, the best part of when the whole gore shit starts kicking in, and uh, four and a half. Yeah, it's a lot of build up. Um, I'm gonna give it five. It's, it's one of these movies that like was a big favorite of mine as a child or as a as a younger person. Uh, still holds up, still awesome. I actually, I've been with my wife eleven years, and somehow I have never made her watch this movie. Really? So the first time she had ever seen it was uh, today, yesterday, and today when we watched it. And I don't know how I've gone eleven years in my relationship without making this woman watch this movie. I don't know how I've done it. But now it's it's been corrected. Uh, she's been chastised, and uh, we won't let this happen again. All right, so we've got a reviews. Um, what we're going to do right now is we're going to, if you're listening to the audio version, you're going to hear from our lovely sponsor, Anchor. If you're watching the video version, um, like I said before, time travel. You were made to buy. Yeah, All right, and we're back from uh, the quote-unquote ad break. We toss it on over to Alex. We're gonna go. He's gonna help us go on over our list for this week. Go ahead and take it away, Alex. All right. So this week we've got a list that we all put together. Um, Ten remakes. Uh, it's uh, called and- curated, sir. <laughs> Compiled, curated, <laughs> produced. <Fucking. laughs> all right. So um, it's uh, ten remakes, and, and and there's no order to how we did it. Um, just basically us agreeing on a list and yep. it worked out. Basically, we just these are the ten remakes that we kind of all think are pretty pretty damn good. All right, so we've got the the first one, uh, the thing. Um, I personally have not seen this one, so I couldn't agree with the two of you. How have you not seen the like, thing? What? This remake or the original one or the original remake? The original remake, the one with Kurt okay, Russell. I have seen that one. Yes. Well, why the fuck would you think yeah, we're no, talking we about were... the remake remake? We were not talking about. I think it's two thousand six, the Elizabeth Shue one. No, no, God, no Mary it Elizabeth oh, Winstead. God damn it, not the shoe. I'm Alex, sorry. Alex, we shoe. talked about this because the whole idea was in <laughs> Halloween, they show the Thing original movie, and then John Carpenter went on to remake the Thing. That's why would we yeah. talk about the Mary Elizabeth Winstead one from 06? There's an 06 one too? I got 82 oh. in 2011. Oh, was it that? I don't know. It's all up. But the, maybe that one's two, kind maybe of a piece of Maybe it's 2011. Okay. That, yeah, anyway. no, we're definitely talking about the one with Kurt Russell. There's no other The Thing yes. movie. Well, we had the whole the argument earlier, so about the... the well, that's because you kept being okay. insistent on going with the wrong stupid movie. <laughs> <laughs> We're professional, guys. So since you have seen this movie, yes. what do you think about it? Um, I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it a lot. I like I like the, the whole uh, test in the blood thing uh, with just the fucking coat hanger. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's, it's almost out. like introducing like sulfate metal to water too the reaction it has <laughs> i am i am in the camp that child's at the end is the thing they all have it i think is the answer i yeah. think i think everybody by the end of the movie is not who they originally were i think by the end everybody's got it i also every time i and i got to i'm going to go find the emulator for this game and stream it every time i think of this i think of the the, the thing game in how, like, in the movie, heat and fire, because that's how you destroy them, was a big element. And in the game, it, it was a huge element. I got to check that game out again. But, um, yeah, sorry, go on. Uh, actually, my opinion. <laughs> um, I like this movie a lot. It's one of those ones yeah. where, like, you know, Kurt Russell was still up and coming. He had Escape from New York uh, and some stuff like that. But I just, I, I, the, you can see where the progression comes from, too. Because Halloween was, what, 78? And the thing is 82? Yeah. And you look at how much he's grown as not only a filmmaker, but how practical effects had grown in that four-year span. It was ginormous. I mean, the thing from 82 is a pioneer of visual effects in horror movies. It just is. Nice little spider head running around. Yeah, and well, when, yeah when it disconnects from the body and it's like all the yeah. tissue and skin, you can see it snapping. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's brilliantly like done. Like an autopsy scene where his hands just go Go right through. Yeah, I mean, it's 
uh, they're horribly graphic. It's one of the one of the rougher ones when like people thought in Alien it popping out of his stomach chest was a big deal, and then you fast forward to, to 1982's The Thing, and it's like Jesus fuck. Like, <laughs> um, but yeah. So what's the next one? So the next one we have on the list is uh, Thirteen Ghost. Um, got some good actors in this one that I and, and I liked it back then. I mean, you got quote, Monk, quote unquote, good. Yeah, you got you got Shaggy and fucking Monk. I like Tony Shalhouba. Tony Shalhoub. Tony Shalhoub. Toby Shalhoub. Uh, is that the guy from Men in Black or from Monk? I can't remember. Uh, it might have been uh, one of the two. He's both. <laughs> <laughs> So for for the longest time, I did not know growing up that this was a, that there was an original Thirteen Ghosts. Yeah, um, yeah. And I I really love this movie. I would argue that Cabin in the Woods takes kind of a, a decent amount of inspiration from the design of this movie. The yeah. concept of trap uh, in the concept of trapping all these nasty entities and one by one watching them get released and start ripping apart this family and. Um, it's one of those one of the movies that kills like because Matthew Lillard at this point was a big pretty big actor, and they end up killing him off in it, you know, like so. Um, I I don't know. I really dig this movie. Yeah, and the only way you can see the ghosts is if you're wearing specific glasses. Yeah, or whatnot. They, it's basically Hollow Man, but for ghosts. <laughs> you know, but it all does culminate in the idea that the house itself is a device designed to conjure these things, and that's how. A yeah, device the, to the do. concept of the house is fucking cool. Yeah, it's another one of those movies where the house is a character. Yeah. Um, but no, I really dig this movie. It's uh, it's a little cheesy, but it's you know you're talking about the juggernaut. <laughs> like there's some <laughs> some pretty cool bitch. pretty cool demons in this movie. So uh, moving on, or did you guys have anything else to say about? Uh, I'm no. I'm bueno. All right, so speaking of houses being uh, another character, we got House on Haunted Hill for number three. I also really like this remake. There's those scenes in it. Where, has everyone seen this remake? I always no. think of the, the piano wire scene. Is it? Is no, that, that's the haunting. That? Ah, fuck. Right. Yeah, where it almost pulls her out. Right. Like, yeah, yeah. That's the haunting. This is where um, it's got Jeffrey Rush, Chris Kattan, uh, a couple. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. Um, Tate Diggs, Jensen Tate, Femke, or Femke it, Jensen, sorry. Yeah, Femke Jensen. Yeah, uh, Ali. Is it Ali Larder or is it the other one that looks like Ali? Larder. Okay, yeah. So, um, this movie's great. Basically, it's all designed to where like the descendants of doctors and whatnot that used to run this insane asylum get an invitation, and the house that's haunted itself is trying to kill the descendants of the torturers that were their doctors and whatnot. And there's scenes where, like, they look into the room and on camera, they're doing this gory-ass medical procedure, and she pulls it down and nobody's there, but on camera they're doing it. Um, it's kind of cheesy. It's really kind of got the same aesthetics almost as, like, Mystery Man, with the way it was filmed yeah. in a weird way. Um, but it's a little goofy. But as far as remakes go, I think it's great because when you're talking about remaking movies that were made in the 50s, you're really, you know, there's no way to make a R-rated horror movie out of a movie that's made in the 50s and be successful. So I thought it was pretty good. All right. Then uh, next on the list we've got number four, Child's Play. I haven't seen this remake. Oh, this I, is all Lewis. It's it's a good movie. Um, th this is one of those remakes, though, where you kind of... Uh, if, if you're going and looking for a carbon copy of brad dwarf's character obviously you're not going to get that um but this is uh it's a good movie and it's interesting now because uh child's play don don mancini doesn't own the rights to child's play which is why his movies are chucky going forward and child's play is going to be its own thing so it's kind of weird now because it's like a really split so you're gonna have like a yeah. chucky chucky movie and then a child's play chucky movie <laughs> so you're going to have a Chucky TV show, oh. the Chucky movies, which are their own thing, and then Child's Play. So it's three now instead of one. Nice. How, how convoluted. Uh, I, <laughs> I would recommend watching it. It's on Hulu, I believe. It might also be on Amazon. Yeah, I think it is on Hulu. I got to give it a shot. I haven't seen it. Um, I'm not a big fan of the Chucky movies because, once again, anything that doesn't come up to my kneecap can be stomped to death real fucking quick. 
<laughs> like, like I said, we all know my position about chest kicking children. You think I'd have any any mercy on a fucking doll? Step on it. Movie over. Sorry. <laughs> like, okay, if he's a serial killer inside of a doll's body. How does a goddamn serial killer inside of a smaller, weaker form make him stronger? No. You you it's step do magic. You step on his little He doesn't feel anything. Doll foot. And you break everything in the in No, the he foot. does feel it. Oh, he, he does? does feel it. That's the thing is like I've never like he comes at me with a knife. Worst case scenario, I take it in the arm. And you know, fa- in fact, just let him stab you in a non-vital area. He only gets the one, and then you rip his fucking head off. He's a doll. Like, it's not scary. Doesn't his body still move without the head? In in uh yeah. In, so the so the longer the longer he stays in the body, the more he starts to eventually turn human. But then the movie just the original just forgets its own made-up yeah. logic. And okay. Just, yeah. That's. It's a terrible movie that I love. <laughs> yeah, I just I, it's you know the Chucky movies have never been a big, big like horror movie big, icon big. for me. Yeah, how about you, Alex? What are your thoughts? Uh, I, it was filmed in Chicago. <laughs> so moving on, that's about it. <clears throat> All right, so moving on, we've got the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah, we already did the review of it. It's one of the, in my opinion, one Watch of the best, it. one of the best remakes that have been produced. All right. Then we've got uh, number six. We've got Dawn of the Dead. Brilliant remake. Uh, made zombies scary again. I truly believe that. Yes. When, you t- when you talk about the, the visual form, that movie made zombies scary again. And then uh, when they're up on the roof and they're they're trying to live live uh, life inside the mall, they're playing golf. I like the game they play where it's like Asian Jay Leno or whatever it is he writes on it. Yeah. And they snipe him. <laughs> Yeah, it, it Roseanne. <laughs> yeah, it de- yeah. Oh, Roseanne, I know Roseanne. It definitely gives the uh, the dark humor a shot to kind of shine. But that's Zack yeah. Snyder. Like people forget that that's a Zack Snyder film. I, I I did enjoy that one though. Um, everything about it, like when they finally do get away and they and they make their you know, they're making their way to the boat and stuff, and then they get to another island and they're still fucked. Like it just yeah it yeah it, like it, there's no happy ending like they open the yeah. like floating box and it's just a severed zombie head, um and then you get you get uh, Matthew Matthew Fru- uh, Frewer whatever the hell his name is from Honey I Shrunk the Kids, uh, Max Headroom he plays the mm-hmm. the father who gets bit, mm-hmm. um yeah that's uh, that actually is one of the movies that got the guy from Modern Family started, Ty Burrell yeah. yeah he played the sarcastic yeah. asshole. Ving yeah, Rhames being Ving Rhames. Completely different from what you know him as Modern yeah, Family. Yeah, he was York. like a womanizing piece of shit in that movie, and then he's on Modern Family. It's like, well, good for him. Another 11 years later. Like, good for you, buddy. Uh, but yeah, no, I think it, that movie's got the kind of the total package. It's, it is one of those movies where the unrated does add not anything to the story, but there's some more zombie kind of coolness that you see because okay. of it. Then you get the security guards who think they're badasses and... By the end of it, you kind of start rooting for the one, and then you got, uh, th- yeah, I, I gotta watch that movie now again because there's that whole escape scene where they're escaping the mall in the city to the dock. That's just brilliant. Fuck, yeah, I don't they watch like that the armored now. buses? Yeah, yeah, don't they, they set up the bus and get chainsaws oh, out there. My wife is not gonna like me this weekend. <laughs> and Zack Snyder is doing a sequel to it. I believe it's called Army of the Dead. Is that a, a direct Remember? sequel, or is it just another it, zombie property? No, it's supposed to be linked to it. The only thing is that movie's been in development hell, and now one of the main stars got Me Too'd, so they're kind of having to do a shit ton of reshoots. Are they reshooting, or, and no. they're taking him out of it? I mm. believe so, Oh, yeah. that's terrible, because that was like, he was, because... My wife was a big fan of his podcast when before he got me too, and before he, ever his entire life was ruined. Um, yeah, we're talking about Chris D'Elia. Yeah, Chris D'Elia. He, audio listeners that don't know. He's he was one of the main stars in in the new Zach. I didn't realize they were shooting around it and removing him. That's terrible. I was looking forward to that movie a lot, especially with Delia in it. Man, that sucks. We, my wife and I, on New Year's Eve, saw Chris D'Elia live. Well, they oh, did shit. the they did the New Year's Eve countdown and everything because like the show ended and he's like, "Do you want to do the countdown here? Or you want to fucking go home?" And everybody obviously wanted to do it there, so they did that. Yeah, no, uh, we were we we're big fans of his, and it's one of those situations where 
I'm a due process guy. I want to know what the truth is. And if the truth is, you know, from what came out, it's there's nothing illegal that happened. It's just kind of like you're kind of a douchebag guy. But I'm if the, if something's legitimately piss poor, especially in that realm, I'll be the first to tell him, you know, hang him by his scrot. But his life's basically shut down now because of something that's he didn't do anything illegal. So it's kind of sucks mm-hmm. that it affects that's so many different funny, things. Funny man, you're. You're guilty until proven guilty. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. That's the other problem is even if you come out that you are fully innocent with proof. His career is ruined. Your image is shattered. You're always going to be the guy who is trying to hook up with a 17-year-old. Yeah. You know, unfortunately. But, yeah, no, uh, this movie, I think, is also up there with top five remakes of all time. All right, so moving on, we've got number seven, uh, Rob Zombie's Halloween. I have to watch this again. Um, this is, you know, Lewis's franchise. I remember really liking it. I like zombies movies, except for a couple of them um, that are kind of just lame. But Lewis, go ahead. I mean, this was your your kind of baby. No, this one's good. Um, the The second one kind of takes a, a different spin on it, but this first one does a good uh, kind of like modern telling for when it came out. Story for Michael Myers, and then if you. If you compare uh, Dr. Loomis in this movie to the original, <laughs> how fucking goofy and unqualified he is. Well, Malcolm uh, McDowell kind of... actually gives you, like, there's there's some soul to the character. Yeah, yeah. Um, one, like, one of the most, like, uh, gut-wrenching scenes in this movie is Danny Trejo's character, who essentially, like, looks after and takes care of Michael, and Michael ends up killing him. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the... the the violence in this movie it's it's awesome i wish rob zombie would have uh went for a third one um but yeah it's it's a good remake um i'd also recommend uh as a, a cheat to add on the 2018 like quasi sequel yeah i mean well, the, yeah. the thing about it is is like i much preferred the halloween 2 sequel over the all right well i'll put it this way if you want the traditional halloween story the original remake by zombies best if you want his take on the Jason storyline, basically, um, but a much gorier film like Halloween Two by Rob Zombie, he takes it into a whole new level. Like the first one is violent, but it's not Rob Zombie violent. And number two, they you if it feels like they were like, go ahead and do your thing, brother. And they are like, I mean, literally Octavia Spencer gets stabbed to death with the point where you're hearing the blade crunch her bones every time he stabs her. Like, he, he smashes a guy's face to jelly. Like, there's some scenes in Halloween 2 that are really rough. Um, but I like that movie more as a violent balls-to-the-wall movie. Halloween, the original remake, is a much better structured film, though. And, yeah, the sequel's really done. I mean, if you, if you believe the lore, it's the only true sequel to the original Halloween. Because they basically, when they, and they're making another sequel. And that, I mean, the, the, the 2018 Halloween movie, when he fucking drops the teeth over the, the toilet stall, like, there's some legitimately awesome scenes in that movie. <laughs> All right, so we're moving on to number eight. Uh, we've got Evil Dead 2. I consider it a remake. This is it's the, it's, it's a lot of conjecture over this. I look at it this way. It redid the first movie with a better budget and extended scenes. It's a fucking remake of the original. But... People don't. I, yeah. I would, I would, I would argue because it, it is the same film shot differently. So that, by definition, standards is a remake. Also, I when I think of this movie, when I moved in with my dad in high school, I for some reason had a VHS player with me, and the only VHS tape I had was Evil Dead Two, which I watched so much I fucking broke it in the VHS player. So okay. I've seen this movie way too many times. I would argue that Evil Dead 2 is a better horror movie, but I prefer Army of Darkness. I love Army of Darkness with the hands. Like, Evil Dead 2 is great for the horror genre, but Army of Darkness is where the goofiness of, like, Bruce Campbell gets to shine. Yeah. Yeah. The whole uh, trying to decipher the, the book. Well, I mean, it's also got the iconic line of, like, and this is my boobstick! And they all, oh, and they jump back because he just fired off the shotgun. Give me some sugar, baby. Does he use the term she-bitch in uh, 
Army of Darkness. Yeah, I when he's so. when the, it's the witch in the 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 like bottom area. Yeah. <laughs> next. All right, All right, next, next, number nine. Uh, we've got the crazies. The crazies with Olafant. It's a great remake that um, if I ever want some attention from my wife, I pop one of his movies on. She gets two hours of eye candy, you know. Um, no, but uh, I like The Crazies a lot. It's another brutal movie. It's a really dark movie. Uh, they don't really kind of pull any punches with it. Um, once it kicks off, it doesn't stop. It's one of those type movies. I saw this movie in theaters, I believe. Yeah, yeah, I think I did too. What, what I liked about it was how, how when the people do have The Crazies, they start changing like their facial features, you know, a little bit of... yeah. See who's really infected with with well. Well, it's also got like a really good classic horror movie ending, where they escape their little town where the infections rampant, and then they come across. Is it Atlanta or one of them? It's one of those like big like southern towns, and it's just like there's <laughs> smoke and you, there's no signals or anything. They're walking into basically just a bigger version of what they fucking escaped from. <laughs> well, yeah, you see, you also see the plane that's like kind of in yeah. the water. Yeah, it's basically. I'm pretty sure it is Atlanta because I'm pretty sure the road that they travel on is the same road from Walking Dead. Ah. Uh, oh my God, they're connected. I'm almost positive. Well, there was also that rumor that Walking Dead and fucking Breaking Bad were connected because of the Merle Merle's blue drug. Oh. <laughs> Next. All right, next we've got the last movie on the on the list here. Uh, we've got House of Wax, which I believe Lewis remake uh, of all time. No, this movie this movie is hot fucking trash, but that's exactly why it's good. Is it about uh, is it about like fondue machines or? <laughs> it's about like, melting crayons. About the hot wax. Is it about like forty year old virgins seen over and over? No, one of one of the best uh, scenes in this movie is uh, what's his face from Supernatural, Jared, yeah. he's, where he's set up to be playing the piano and the guy kind of rips part of his fucking face off. I don't remember this movie at all. Like I remember the ending where the house is literally melting. Yeah, but I it's don't really bad. remember this bad. movie all that well. I know Paris, Paris Hilton, Hilton gets killed. Character, yeah, you want her to die as soon as you, as soon as you see her. I, you know, nowadays, though, that's most movies I watch. Like, where I'm watching family comedies. I'm like, I hope, I hope that whole family dies. Like, I just want to pay Then you remind right yourself, like, oh, shit, wait, it's not a horror oh, movie. Oh, fuck, this is Welcome Home, Roscoe Jenkins. What am I doing? <laughs> Nobody's going to die right here. I do love that movie. If you've never seen Welcome Home, Roscoe Jenkins, I do recommend it. All right, everybody. That was the list. Right. No order. That was all ten, right? I'm not jumping the gun, am I? Yes, no, you're, you're right. Some bitch, I'm good. Anyways... <laughs> We're going to end it here, everybody. This is, uh, once again, thank you for joining us for the second week of our um, Shocktober, or what I think we call H Mom. The H Mom. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Horror movies only month. <laughs> I, I literally put that in the description, and then, like, right after I did it, I was like, why did I fucking put that in there? But. <laughs> Now it's stuck. Now it's now it's uh, it's lore. So we will be back next week. Um, our category next week is going to be anthology movies. Uh, we're not going to tell you what they are because you're going to fucking have to wait. Anyways, I want to thank you for watching. Please leave a like, subscribe. When you're driving, you know, on your way to work, or you you know, you're taking the family out for a nice trip, throw on the podcast, blast it so they can all hear it. Get the whole family involved. The whole yeah. family, the chitlins. The adults, the cousins, the aunts, the uncles, the grandparents, the great grandparents, the, the are they babies. This is one of those big old Astro vans from the nineties. Basically, okay. the vans that had like the camper pullouts that you see in the expensive campers. Press a button and it fucking turns into a Winnebago. With um, the ladder in the back that goes up to the top. Yeah, because there's three floors to it. Mexican flag on the side of it. Um, <laughs> That's what we grew up with. My grandpa had one of those, and I remember going into Michigan, and he took the back roads, and you would literally, like, there'd be, like, six of us in the back all laying on the floor getting concussions from, like, where it was bouncing up and down and shit. God, I hated that van. Anyways, <laughs> thank you, everybody, for watching. I'm signing out. We will see you next week. Uh, say bye, fellas. Goodbye. See you next week. Don't, don't forget. <laughs> you ass. <laughs>